Alrighty. Hi right, everybody, uh, I'm just going to wait a minute here just to let some people get in. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and do our Hester Pierce video. We got a, a lot of good information on her and a lot of ties to family offices, uh, Citadel. Basically, you name it, she's on their side. So she's definitely not on retail side. So we're going to break this down for you guys. Uh, it's going to be a lot of DD though, so it's going to be a long one here. But I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes. All right, I'm going to give it five more minutes. At 9:50, we'll start. But we got a lot, a lot to go over. So I'll, I'll just, I'll be back in about two, three minutes, my friends. I'm sure she'll be watching. Hopefully, she's pretty nervous for this one, man. We got a lot of, a lot of ties to a lot of bad, bad actors here. This girl, uh, she's definitely por pro corporation, and it's pretty funny how she actually ends up in office. So, like I said, well, we'll break this down to a couple minutes. I'll be back in about two minutes, my friends. And uh, just so you guys know, when I'm going to go over this material, because it's like 40 minutes worth of stuff, I'm not going to be checking Chad as much, so you know.
Alrighty, let's get started here. So, as most of you guys know, Hester Pierce is the commissioner of the SEC. She's the one who voted no, and now all the apes want to dig into her. And she's got a lot of ties and a lot of corruption basically around this woman. So, let's just get right into the video. Like I said, guys, I'm sorry I'm going to close my chat. I have a lot to go over. I don't want to go back and forth. It'll take way too long. So, but let's get started. So, first thing I want to talk about is this wiki page out here. So, we're going to get into a lot of these guys. So, remember these names. But the first thing I want to do is go into her legal career. And one of the things she did is she worked for this law firm. And it was called Wilmer and Hale. And this Wilmer and Hale will continuously come up. They're a very bad actor. And basically, you know, a lot of us have been talking about there's this mastermind behind it helping them out and they're finding the loopholes for them and I think this Wilmer and Hale law firm is the one that is the basically mastermind for this company or for all these companies um, they basically every single one of them that comes out of there either goes to the SEC or they end up basically going to Citadel or Virtue they go to all sorts of basically it's like a merry-go-round on who they're helping out. So like I said, we'll get way more into this in a second here, but um, Wilmer and Hale remember that name. And one of the things I want to talk about here is after that, she actually was on the council for Commissioner Paul Atkins. And Paul Atkins, if you look over on this page here, what he was actually known for was basically being a regulator with a light touch. He didn't like to give corporations big fines at all. He said that if you actually come down here and look down, I don't want to pay for this stupid thing, so I'm not going to sign in. But uh, basically, he wanted to. Uh, he argued that fines for big companies it actually does nothing but punish the shareholders. doesn't Doesn't punish the company. So he's against big fines. He's against big regulation. And basically, this is one of the people that she oversaw. Um, one of the reasons I want to bring that up is come down here a little bit. So. Basically, when you're trying to get a seat at the SEC, you get approved by like the Senate or you know the president, things of that Senate Banking Committee. You know you have to have backings, things of that nature. Well, this is why I think this lady was planted here, because if you look, she was actually never approved by the full Senate. She was only approved by the Senate Banking Committee. Um, after that, actually, if you look, she was one of the ones in 2015. She voted no on market transparency. Uh, for investor uh, protection and communication protocols, and all of our favorite thing, the ATSs. And I know everybody gets super mad when they hear ATSs and dark pools. So you can go ahead and thank this lady. Um, also, she worked on the Dodd Frank Act. She oversaw regulatory implementation of it. And now, actually, it's really funny because in 2012, shortly after. She wrote a book about the Dodd-Frank Act, what it does. I'll actually pull that book up here later. I got the PDF. Uh, little things, a couple things about it, but we'll pull that up in a second. Um, so after a little bit after that, she basically did nothing but trash all these rules that she oversaw. And let's see here. So one of the things that I thought was pretty funny is if you come down here, like I said, we'll get to this uh, Mercado Center. I know a lot of people are looking at that, like, let's talk about that, but we'll get to that in a second. But one of the things that she talks about more than anything is how we need to do less regulation on the banks. She basically, she loves uh, less regulation on banks, cryptos, things of that nature. And like I said, we'll get into all that more in a second here. But one of the things that she said in 2018 is she thinks that lawyers who work for large corporations practice a form of public interest so she obviously like i said we'll get way more into this but she's super super pro corporations more pro self-regulation she doesn't really think that you know having the sec watching these guys is necessarily a good thing so it's like why would you have somebody like that in charge of the off uh like i said it, in the sec it's, it's insane to me but let's go down here so we're talking about that Wilmer and Hale. We'll go into a little bit more about them. So like I was saying before, the thing with this this law firm is they either seem to be paying off people in some way. Almost every one of these guys for like the last five years, I'll keep pulling them up. But they are basically getting paid off by by this law firm or associates of the law firm nonstop. And it's it's just crazy. But one of the people on it uh, is Dan Prezoff. What I can't even say his name. I don't even care. But basically, he got paid $2 million 
from all these banks. It was JP uh, Morgan. He had Citadel, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup. And I actually have another article here. So I like to get a couple sources before I just read one or two. But this actually breaks down every single one of the clients, how much they paid them, PDFs. I'll put both of these links up. But like I said, this, this law firm, I truly believe this law firm is the mastermind into the gray areas, the loopholes. Like I said, it's just continuously them working or paying these guys off to, to just look the other way or to push for different votes, narratives, things of that nature. Um, Sorry, one second here. Let's go on to the next thing quick. So more into this Wilmer and Hale. So one of the things that I pulled up that I found pretty interesting, we'll pull up all the PDFs for all this as well, is Wilmer and Hale actually acted as counsel for Citadel in connection with requests for exemptions. So this law firm, like I said, they're continuously tied to Citadel, connections, regulations, things of that nature. We'll get into more exemptions here in a second. But as you guys can see, obviously this law firm is continuously helping out people that we absolutely hate. I'm now going to pull up this. So it talks about the credit default swaps. I'm going to go ahead and pull over. So this is actually the SEC thing about it. If you guys, I'll post this if you just want the brief thing. Just because I know a lot of people don't like to read an entire file. If you want to read the entire file, I have that as well. But basically, they were getting exempt from from using clearing houses and things of that nature. Like I said, it's very interesting read. I'll put this up for you guys. I'm not going to get into a, too many of these things super hardcore in this video because there's a lot of stuff to get into. But like I said, I'll post both of these so you guys can do quick reads on this. But like I said, so this law firm basically was helping Citadel get all of these. Uh, where were we at? Right here. So this law firm basically is helping Citadel get all sorts of exclusions and then if you look at some other exclusions that they got go ahead and put up an edgar search they've been constantly giving them provisions exemptions for the investment company act of 1940 and i don't know if you guys remember my family office video but but they were also involved in that as well so it's like classic like i said these guys the this company she worked for this law firm it it's insane uh, what they're doing here. So I got this as well. If you guys want to go ahead and pull up this, I'll post this on the bottom. Like I said, I'll post all the PDFs so you guys can look way more into this stuff. But basically, like I said, uh, let me pull up here. I don't remember where I had it. Sorry, I have so many things up here. But basically, they're re re looking for what is it here? They're trying to get reestablished to get exempt again in this thing, and they're giving the reasons why they need to be exempt. But like I said, it's like. There shouldn't be exemptions for market makers in the first place, period. Like, what is what is happening, first of all? But let's get more into this Hester Pierce lady. Well, we'll get into this here in a second. But uh, another person that actually came from this place, this law firm, he actually went straight over to the SEC from this law firm. And now, from there, he's now in charge for general counsel at Citadel Securities. So, like I said... These guys are continuously coming from this law firm. So the, everybody's been wondering who's been behind a lot of this stuff. Like I said, we got to look way more into this this law firm. I guarantee you they're the ones coming up with everything. They continuously have people going from them to Citadel or the SEC or then and then and then. So, But let's get back to Hester Pierce because I feel like we're getting way off talk of it. Like I said, we're going to go down a lot of rabbit holes because... This this Hester Pierce lady is involved in a lot of a lot of stuff here. So basically, one of the things here I wanted to show you guys. So remember how I was talking about the senators and all these people? They actually didn't back her or vote her for her nomination. If you actually come over here and read this thing, this was when she was talking to all these people and getting nominated and things of that nature. She was talking about this, and it goes, "What is uh?" Basically, they're just trashing her. Um, I'm sure some of you people might have seen the video, but basically she talks about how everything this lady proposes from her writings is less oversights of big banks, fewer efforts to rein in on them, more chances to take big risks, boost their profits, and if things go wrong, I'm crying to the government for another bailout. So basically, as you guys can see, they didn't have much faith in her. So why the hell would we? And on top of that, she voted no for transparency. She already did that before in 2015. So this is clearly nothing new for her. Um, at the end of this, like I said, we're going to break down her quotes. I have her exact quotes and reasoning why she said no. 
and then once we get through this video, every single thing she says, basically you'll you'll understand why she uh she's saying all these things. One second, let me get back to where we were. Um. Oh yeah. So basically, let's go back over here as well. Sorry, I'm all over the place. You guys, I have way too many tabs open today. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to definitely read this, guys, for you guys here. So basically, as you see me, talks about corporate lives. I'll post this up. You guys can get way more into this stuff. It gets a lot funnier. But basically, she talks about, I want to urge you to expand your vision on how, uh, or expand your vision on how one can serve the public as a lawyer. She's basically talking to these people to become public lawyers instead, like I was showing you before. Um, basically, she goes at the end of all these quotes talking about not not the big ones, but the you know not the little companies, but the big ones. But she goes, we need to not look beyond the core profit making activities of the corporation, which it's like we all know the the profit core activity making is them stealing from us, them front running, <laughs> them doing all these OTC derivatives markets, all this stuff. So it's like, how can somebody like that say that who's saying we need to basically look past all that, be a regulator? Like I said, this stuff gets <laughs> insane when you get, keep watching and learning more and more about this lady. So one of the things I wanted to talk about here, so God, we'll, we'll get into that in a second, the Koch brothers. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, One second. Where were we? All right, so basically let's move on for a little bit. So one of the things when we talked about went over here. And I kept talking about this as the Mercado Center. Basically what they are is I'm going to come over here and show you. We'll break it down on our PDF here as well for our payments. But what the hell is it? Sorry, I got way too many. All right, here it is. So a lot of people, I'm, you guys have probably seen this on Twitter. But I don't know, a lot of people obviously don't have Twitter. So I'm going to just post it up anyways just in case you haven't seen it. But basically she receives 98% of her salary from this think tank. Um, basically they're against... Like I said, they're an anti radical regulatory agenda. Like, they they hate it. They think everything about Wall Street needs to be unregulated. Self-regulation will be fine, which we obviously saw in 2008. That's not the case. Um, like I said, this lady is insanely corporation. And if you come in here, I'll go ahead and post this as well. This goes and shows you guys, you know, what she's got stakes in. I mean who's paying her, things of that nature. Well, like I said, we'll post all this information as well for you guys. I don't need to keep going deep into everything. But we'll get back over into this. So this company here, this whatever, they're actually a think tank and they're funded by the Koch brothers. And if you guys don't know who the Koch brothers are, well, one of the things that they are is basically the second largest family office. So basically you have a family office think tank about regulations. <laughs> and then you have basically... One of the you no know, richest family offices out there, they're in charge of it, and that's crazy. Like, like I said, if you guys, this is the problem with our regulation. If you guys look at it in every way, shape, or form, you got the DTCC, which is in charge of everything. Well, the banks are the people writing all the is the contracts. They're the one doing all the derivatives. They're the ones making all the problems. And guess what? They're the ones who are in charge of the DTCC. Like I said, all these people are self-regulating. And, I'll, and, and we have a person on the SEC literally saying that we need more self-regulation and less less government involvement. And it's, like I said, we'll get way more into what she says, and especially about her crypto. I know a lot of people are going to talk about her crypto. She definitely doesn't want regulation of any kind in crypto. Uh, we'll break down some lawsuits and stuff she was involved in. But like I said, this lady obviously, as you can see in every way, shape, or form, is 100% pro corporations it's just ridiculous um so now that we're talking about the crypto market we'll go ahead and move over to that this is one of my favorite quotes <laughs> gamification of retail tr uh retail trading platform isn't necessarily a bad thing like what <laughs> wasn't their entire like when you know the government had their thing weren't they talking about gamification was so bad and all this stuff and she's over like eh it's not too bad like I said, this this lady loves her crypto. Um, if you come down here, this other guy who also works, like I said, it's like they're all tied together. You got the CTS, uh, CFTC chairman, and he actually loves. Like I said, we'll go to come. We'll break this one down here real quick. Basically, she wants a three-year grace period before these, you know, security laws kick in on these cryptocurrencies. She thinks 
that if they put regulations on these cryptocurrencies, they might regulate it like they regulate the stock market in a term, and that will, in her in her terms, it will destroy innovation and it'll you know make it it'll destroy technology because they won't be able to do certain things. And it's like, no, you just want to go ahead and be able to just like I said, this lady's insanely corrupt but i'll go ahead and post these things as well but one of the things that she was insanely mad about so she's super mad about this telegram lawsuit and one of the things that she was mad about so what they were doing is basically this telegram company found a way that they wouldn't have to register they found like a sidestep basically that they wouldn't have to register with the sec because what they're going to do is basically sell these tokens are are the rights they were selling the rights to buy tokens so you wouldn't even buy tokens yet because the platform wasn't there but they were selling the rights to tokens at the time so it wasn't technically a security so that it was kind of like a sidestepping way to get around the sec and it was like i said it was clearly trying to get around stuff and then she's like no nah, that shouldn't be bad you should they should be able to do certain things like that you, and it's like why i could already see corruption go you're telling me that what happens if the company like they don't even launch up all the way all these investors just lose their money like i said it's just a it's a whole bunch of things you could see problems going on and she just like i said this lady she loves unregulation um like i said she wrote this book and it's pretty interesting if you guys go ahead and pull it up. Uh, I got the PDF here. I'll go ahead and show everybody. Like I said, I'll put it at the bottom. Uh, you can read all the things. It actually talks about hedge funds, reviews on hedge funds, insurance, derivatives, all whatever you want to talk. You know, talk about it's in there. But definitely a quick, interesting read. Her view on the the Dodd Frank. I could go down there and read it, but like I said, I feel like we already have a lot of stuff to look at here. So. I'll go ahead and look at that in a minute with everybody. But like I said, you can obviously see this lady is 100% pro, completely pro corporate being in charge of everything themselves. So, um, where are we at here? Dot Frank. Uh, let's see here. Move over to this. So, another thing I found that I thought was pretty interesting here is this. She was involved with this. Um, let's see, it's called Derivatives Clearinghouse and Way to Failure. So, basically. This girl, they were talking about how the derivative market is set up to fail. And obviously, why wouldn't it be? It's, you're sitting there borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. Um, but basically, if you come down... Where the heck is it? A Citadel. Sorry, I might have lost it. Um, basically, they talk, what they talk about in this thing is how... The Dodd-Frank Act was supposed to... Because of... But if you guys don't remember, I talked about ISDA contracts. I'll keep looking for it thing I want to show you guys, but basically they talk about the is the contracts I was talking about with big banks. They were saying how basically, big, oh, it should be right up here. Big banks um, caused the financial crisis in 2008 with all these derivatives because basically in 2008, 75% of derivatives, 75% of all total derivatives in a $610 trillion derivative market was interest rate derivatives. But there was about 15%. I could break it down here. There was that graph. <sighs> Sorry. I, I, I know I was going to lose this crap. But uh, So basically, 15% of these were uh, equity and 5% uh, were only credit swaps. So basically, like I said, these guys were packaging up everything and then repackaging the interest and then selling that as a package in a bond. So basically, like I said, they... These guys have been passing this to each other, passing it through derivatives, and basically bank to bank. And then what it talks about in this PDF, I'll find it later on here, and I'll make a video, an actual video. I just wanted to make a live one so we could actually have a communication with it. But uh, basically what it talks about is how these guys are passing the whole purpose of this derivatives market, the OTC market, when it was first created, was so they could pass on risk. If somebody's risk got too, basically too, if they had too much risk, and they didn't want to have anything come down to where it would be unstable and the government would have to come bail it out. Because it says if one clearinghouse goes down, basically, the, the, the way that it's set up is there would be no choice for the government 
to come in and step in. Or basically, you saw what happened with Robin Hood. They shut the buy button off. That was the only way to stop it, according to Apex Clearing. They were the clearinghouse that was going to go down. So basically, they already forecasted this in 2012 that this was going to happen because of the way the derivatives market set up. And on top of that, they talk about before Phase 5 happened. I don't know if you guys have seen my Phase 5 video. If not, you should go check that out. It talks about how they're going to oversight these derivative markets now. Basically, before that, it was unsupervised. These guys were writing stuff to these banks and basically saying, here's these shares, by the way. You sent me these. Tell me you sent me these shares. I'm going to say I received these shares. And this is what I was trying to tell everybody because everybody was getting so excited about the 21st. Everyone was like, oh, man, there's all these these contracts. There's so many contracts. You guys, those were – they were basically is the contracts. They were probably set to being put to $1 because the only way that those, those sham resets work is they have to go out of the money. So there's no basically payment or any kind of transaction that needs to take place at that point. So basically they can both – boom, it went off. So basically, like I said, it doesn't give them the option in the computer system now to either ex uh, ex uh, sorry, exercise those shares or sell them and take that money. So like I said, it's a way that they could, on both of their computers, balance it out and just continuously pass the torch. The DTCC, unfortunately, is the one who has all the information on all of this. They're also the bankers who are writing all of these. So that's the main problem with our, like I said, our current setup. You have the bankers who are writing all these contracts continuously regulate every single thing. And then they're the ones writing the rules. So it's like, how in the hell can you ever, I don't know, like I said, keep up with them? It's crazy. And like I said, how can they have $610 trillion in derivatives and it all be interest rate derivatives? Like I said, this, this whole thing has been set to fail for so long. It's just literally insane but after looking at all this stuff and our ties of these companies we're going to go ahead and break down why she didn't want transparency things of that nature um basically like i said she didn't want she didn't feel that uh where are we at here sorry so recommendation why she said no oh, where was it give me one second it's not what i wanted Oh, yeah, so basically she talks about over and over how more data is not always better because basically if you have more data, she basically says citing gaps in data is not enough in, not enough of a reason why we need to gain you know more regulation to make sure that we continuously get that data. There should always be gaps in the data. First of all, there should never be gaps in the data ever. What, there, there's no reason why there should ever be a gap at any any reason. The way our technology is set up, why would there ever need to be a gap? The second I do a trade, it should hit a broker. That broker should, A, he shouldn't even send it to a market maker. He should already have had that share in his thing and just send it to me. Market maker shouldn't even be involved in this crap. The only reason that they're involved is because... They need liquidity. In other words, when shares run out, they need a person who can take on debt, who can take on these swaps, who can take on all this stuff in the back end to create fake shares to continuously keep the ball rolling. That's also why they use the CNS program. But like I said, as you guys can see, she doesn't want transparency because she has all these companies that are inside of her pocket or she worked with them or she and on top of that, she hates regulation. Her number one person who's paying her is a family office who is literally a, an unregulated hedge fund. So, like I said, she's definitely in, been been getting paid off for sure. She has no, no love for the retail investors, my friend. And this lady is literally a regulator when she is literally 100% anti-regulation. So... Like I said, this stuff's nuts, so I'm going to come back to the chat now, see if you guys have any questions, see if you guys have any comments, whatever you want to do. I got more, but I've I've already went over this stuff for like 40 minutes, 30 minutes, so I'm going to come back, see what you guys are thinking.
But like I said, to me, the fact that she wasn't even Senate didn't even want her in, but the the Senate Banking Committee. Well, think about that. The Senate Banking Committee is made up of fucking all the bankers, the people writing is the con is the contracts. They basically wrote that she was planted there by them. So I mean, like I said, this chick is shill as hell, <laughs> beyond shill as hell, and it's ridiculous. So I don't know. Like I said, you guys. This this chick's definitely not our friend, so we need to do a lot more research into this law firm. We need to do a lot more research into all these other SEC chairmen or anyone else that's been involved, like I said, from this law firm for sure. Or getting paid off because, like I said, this swamp's running deep, my friends. Yes, I, I would assume that she's against us, man. At this point... Other, there's other apes that have put out some DD on her, too, on a whole bunch of stuff. But like I said, I mean, the fact she's connected to a law firm that literally has all these exemptions for Citadel, continuously finds them for Citadel, all these banks. The fact she continuously says that regulation needs to be less and less and less. I mean, like I said, I didn't go into this stuff as much as I'm going to in my video. I don't even think I got to this page. But basically, right after, you know, she came out with all of her stuff, her book, uh, all these, like, basically was exposing all the things. What do you know? Right after all that, Citadel came into the swaps, and they were, like, boom, just emerging. Just emerged. What the hell? And now they're the number three. So, like I said, man, this chick definitely, definitely is sus as, sus as fuck. Like, super sus. <laughs> But now we know why she said no. A thousand percent. She definitely uh, definitely has got some hands in her pocket. And like I said, I'll post all this stuff too. I mean, you guys can check it out right here. There's that, that stupid uh, the little anti-regulatory place. They're all over the place. Salary bonus. Her income, her income from them, $247,000 in case you guys were wondering. That two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars, you guys, is the price of your soul. Just so you guys know, just two hundred fifty k. You give me two fifty k, you got my vote. But on top of that, that's the problem. This is one of the things about family offices that I cannot stand. So the fact that she works for this, like I was showing you guys before with the family offices, they don't need to be part of the family. If you are an employee of that family office, which it's like, I think they're exempt from even reporting who the fuck's an employee. If And obviously the Koch brothers got their family office here. So, I mean, if you're an employee of the Koch brothers, blah, 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 and they say that you're part of the family, you can get exemptions from your own trades. Now, can you guys imagine if she's getting paid 250000 on the books, but yet she's over here in the back end with these Koch brothers in this family office, and she's doing trades with them, or they're giving her all this money in the back end. We would never, ever be able to see this. And this is why it's like, dude, family offices need to be regulated. We need to know who they're literally giving these exemptions to. We need to know who's in all this stuff, man. Like I said, this stuff's crazy. The fact she's even involved in something that's involved with the like i said we we definitely need to look in this law firm dude it's a complete joke this chick's definitely been bought out like i said 250k that we know of who knows what's in her family office account so like always bribes backdoor bribes that we can't even see i'm sure there's some cayman island crap for her somewhere who knows but Definitely been paid off. There, there's your receipt for you right there, just in case. Two fifty. Oh, and then she gets. No, it's not just two fifty. She get. She gets some. Uh, looks like she gets some stock. It's a little stock. She gets some, you know, index funds here. Let's see what else she's got going on for these bad boys. And that's about it. She gets a defined contribution plan. Who the fuck knows what even that is, dude? <laughs> so, like I said, she's getting paid off. Just these payoffs, dude. 
How do we get rid of her? I have no idea yet, man. I was too busy laughing at all this stuff where I'm like, how she has a tie to a family office. She has ties to Citadel. She has ties to a law firm that helps them all out. She has ties to a law. Yeah, that's that's Fidelity. She's got Fidelity stuff. But Fidelity, I mean, you can't get, think that that's Fidelity, anything like that. Fidelity's main like a... It could be bribes, man. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know, man. At this point, who knows, dude? But like I said, it's disgusting, man. Two hundred fifty thousand is the price of your soul, and and some shares. And then on top of that, oh, one of the things I wanted to show you guys quick that I almost forgot. So remember, I was just talking about shares there, quick. If you look down here, so they gave that this guy, and this is what I'm talking about. They gave this guy here two point five million on the SEC. Well, at the bottom here, it also says he also received partnership shares of five hundred uh, thousand to a million. Uh, so he basically gets shares of the company of this law firm. He stands to receive a pension from them also of another 100000 to 250000 which he says is maintained by an independent U.S. brokerage firm, which probably is Fidelity. It's probably Fidelity. So Fidelity's house and the bribes. <laughs> well, like I said, dude, this shit's it's deep, man. It's crazy. It's like... Like I said, every single thing about this lady, she says nothing but less regulations. Oh, yeah, this is another thing, too. So if you come here and you look at this... This... Whatever the hell it is. If you look down here, it says, 14 out of the 23 rules of the White House chose for hit list to eliminate or modify were made by these people. So, like I said, these guys come in and they're like, we need to... We need to slam, like I said, this is the mastermind, you guys. It's this Wilmer and Hale and this, this, these guys. These dudes, those two companies together are the people we've all been wondering who's in the back end helping these guys out. It's Wilmer and Hale and it's fucking this Mercatus Center. They are the masterminds to all the loopholes and all the gray areas. I said, if you look over here, we'll show it up one more time. I said they are... The ones who are giving them connections to request for exemptions. They've been their counsel for those time periods. I don't know what else more we need to show other than this chick's <laughs> completely, completely paid chill. So, I don't know if you guys have any other questions, definitely put it in the chat. I mean, I don't have much more to go over other than all that stuff, man. That was a lot of stuff. But I'll definitely post this stuff so you guys can check that out. I think I just close the tab I'll open that back up but there's the face two hundred fifty thousand dollars paid <laughs> that's it that's the cost <laughs> shit's crazy man shit's crazy I mean, if anyone has any questions at all, I mean, it can be related to anything. We don't have to talk about Hester Pierce here real quick. If you guys have any market questions, AMC questions, stock questions. Yeah, basically, Citadel's pretty much purchased the United States, man. They pretty much if, bribe everyone. They're in everybody's pocket at some point. It's crazy. They're either, like I said, they're either bribing somebody or they're bribing somebody with the, to give them exemptions at some point. When's the moon, man? I have no idea. But when it happens, God, are we going to be excited, dude. Let's just say this. The longer they sit there and the longer they take, man, the more money we're going to make. I'm already at my one-year mark on the 28th, so keep prolonging it, dude. They drop the price down. A lot of us are going to get our tax return soon. And if it's in 12, 13 bucks and I get my tax return, I'm jacked, dude. So I don't really care what they do with the. It doesn't matter what they do with the price until they cover. And if it's at 21%, basically, 20.5%, it was over 100 million shares at this point. And you guys, the other thing you got to realize, too, when they sit there and cover, if you guys watch my CNS video, because. There was a law that was passed, basically. So the CNS, the NSCC, back in the day, were able to do buy-ins. So basically what these guys are able to do is take short positions out of the CNS program. Basically, they create synthetic shares. 
they were now they were regulated, and then a law got passed where they were no longer they had to buy these things back after six days. Well, that law passed, and they were no longer able to enforce that. So they were able to ho hold these shorts longer than six days. So what they tried to do was do this thing to where they said, if volume is significant, you have to start buying these back. So a lot of the times when people do TA and they go, where did all the, where did this stuff come from? Or I didn't see this coming. How is this happening? Most of the time it's from those CNS buy-ins. They're just getting rid of those synthetics technically. There's no stop them from taking it down to two dollars, man. Us, first of all, and number two, I mean, do you really care? I I don't think they can. Even if they tried to take it down to two bucks, I don't see how they could. There's just way too much. Retail owns way too much. There's still way too many. You guys got to think too. They have all these institutions that have this. They're not selling. Most of them are keep buying in. So at what point do you sit there and look at it and go, all right, these institutions aren't going to let it drop down to two. I just don't see it going down to two dollars. Fundamentally, the company's getting better. We're in a way better position than we've ever been in at this point, man. Since we've started this entire thing, AMC has been burning money every single month that we've sat there and held our stock. And at this point, they're now profiting. I, I mean, like I said, guys, this they got rid of their worst eight performing theaters, ended up getting five theaters in the top 100. That's that's big news. On top of that, you got the stuff. A lot of people, you know, don't realize how big that that Saudi Arabia thing is. Them letting us use them as a brand is going to be massive. That's going to make quite a bit of money for the company. Saudi Arabia was a, like a multi-billion-dollar place over there, and if they're going into 50 theaters, they have no upfront costs, which is huge. That's going to be on seven. So that's just pure profit for them just to use their name. I didn't know Lou stole my DD, my friend. I don't think he did. What DD did he steal? I have honestly don't know why they borrow that many shares in the morning and return. And I've been looking into that too. I don't know if it's a glitch. From Stonko Tracker, it could be a glitch on their end. They could be resetting, could be resetting things. Uh, they could be. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I wish I don't know. I honestly don't know about that. There could be so many things that they could be doing. But I've been watching that, and I noticed it's happening every single day at basically five thirty in the morning to six in the morning. You'll see five, six million shares go, and then not even the next thirty minutes, they're all back. I think it's what. I think what they're doing is that's how they're able to keep the uh, borrow rate so low. Is they're doing that every morning. Maybe they're putting in shorts, opening more contracts. I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know how they're doing it. But they're doing something like that to, I think, just lower that. I'm not too sure, though, honestly. Yeah, I think Tony's right. I mean, that sounds about right. Like I said, th it makes sense. Constantly showing that there's shorts available or moving. So at that point, you would lower the volume or the cost to borrow. The new rule. Um, I think the new rule, I don't remember. I think they have 30 or 60 days to get that implemented, but I don't think they'll take that long. No, we can't short family offices, man. You wouldn't want to either way, man. They're they're like multi-billion dollar unregulated hedge funds. You ain't going to ever win that short position, my friend. But, like I said, the playbook at this point for everybody, we need to buy on lit exchanges. I know you've heard it up the ass, but you got to do it. We got to keep doing that. You continuously see Webull. You continuously see the data showing that we're not doing it as much as we should. We got to stop doing bad option plays. You're just helping them out. We got to, like I said, uh, the main, everyone thinks the main people is the market makers, these hedge funds. But those guys, the market makers, 
you know, their backing, their liquidity provider is these banks and these is the contracts. So if you get, you know, we take money out of banks, we go into credit unions, we go into local mom and pop banks. That is how you fight their liquidity and their back end and their support and their backing. And once those banks start losing money, like they're going to start losing money in China, these ISDA contracts start getting a lot more expensive for these hedge funds. And they're not going to be able to open as many. They're not going to be able to dilute it as much. Or they're going to do what they ha uh, did earlier. And all of a sudden, you're going to see the short short interest just spike. Like those days when you suddenly saw six, seven, eight million, or it'd go up five, six percent in a day. That's because they didn't have enough to buy the ISDA contracts at that moment. So they had to take out real shorts. So, I mean, I know a lot of people are thinking we're losing. They're looking at the graph. But like I said, you guys, this if you're this distraught, I know it's taking time, but that's all they got on us. It's time. We told you from day one, the only thing they're going to try to do is get you guys bored. And it's working. And not only are you guys getting bored, you're getting frustrated. And why? Because most people stare at the line every day. So you think about it daily. You're long on this position. It's a short squeeze. And until they cover, if 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 the stock price goes to three dollars tomorrow, they yes, a lot of these people are like, hey, you know, these guys are in the money. They're in the money. They're, why, you know, yeah, they are in the money. So eventually, to get that money, guess what? They got to cover that short position. Then they get their money. They don't get their money just because their position at the current time is green. They still need to buy it back. So guess what? They're going to make money when they do that and will make money because now the stock price will go back up. So it's going to be a revolving door for a little bit longer. I mean, like I said, I can see these hedge funds. Are, you already see and continuously hear about these hedge funds over and over now. They're having problems again, having problems again. Citadel already had to bail out Melvin. If they're having problems again, who's going to bail them out again? There's a reason Citadel had to bail out Melvin instead of Robin Hood. They had to bail out Melvin because it would have destroyed them more personally. So if Melvin goes down, maybe Citadel goes down. None of us truly know the exact answer on what will make it blow up. But like I said, there's a lot of things that are going on. And in the end of the day, these derivatives, there was way too much. You're talking way too many people, way too much money, way too many billions of dollars from billionaires who are going to eventually say, all right, I want my money. <laughs> like, eventually they're going to say it. They're not going to be borrowing out for the rest of their life. And eventually, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I, I can't see them. They can't lose faith in the entire United States stock market. That alone would crumble the system. If they did that and all of a sudden all people started pulling out middle class who are they going to steal from they'd have no choice but to steal from rich people and you know once you start stealing from rich people that's when rules start getting changed real quick so the main problem that we could fix our, our stock market literally in one day and it's very very simple how do you fix the stock market you go all right instead of these fines i'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put you in jail, period. I'm going to bar you from trading. You no longer get to bar and trade. I was in a space call with Dave Lauer yesterday, and that was, he brought up a very good point. When is the last time you've heard of a company getting banned from trading? It's been like 20 years, 30 years. Said somebody, big company, a major company, a major broker we're talking about, has been banned from trading. And then when they got banned from trading, guess what they did? They just went and made a family office anyways and went right back into trading. But now they did it unregulated. <laughs> so it's like, like I said, we need to put people in jail. And that's it. Like, that's how you do this. You stop with the fines. If you guys have never heard me say this word, it's called acceptance, waiver, and consent. Acceptance, waiver, and consent. This is what's wrong with the, our stock market right here. God damn it. There you go. Read that. And it's a joke. And this is why, because of this right here, it's saying that they're going to pay a fine. They're not going to admit to doing anything wrong. Well, if they don't admit to doing anything wrong, you can't charge them. But they paid the fine 
so you're not going to look into their data because they're basically like, yeah, we're guilty, but don't punish me because I'm guilty. Just kind of tell me, you know, here, we're going to fine you less than what you stole so the people you stole from get to pay it. Just don't do it again. Let me think about this. Citadel has 50 violations. 50 violations since 2012. 50. In what world? Like, I can't go out in the public and get arrested 50 times. If I got arrested 50 times, all right, by, by time 10 to 12, guess what? You're probably in jail for forever. Like, but these guys can do 50 fines in five years and keep going. Like I said, that this is the number one problem is you have regulators like this who hate regulations. You have people that are in charge of us, the, uh, the market. They're the ones running everything and governing it. And then if they ever get caught, it's a slap on the wrist. And nobody ever has that, that fear of, all right, I'm going to get banned. It's just the fear of, all right, maybe. How hard do you, let's be real, you guys. How hard do you think this lady right here, after l learning all that you've learned today, how hard do you think this lady truly does her investigations on corporations when she sees these people doing this stuff? Do you truly believe she she goes all out? Do you guys truly think that this girl's like, all right, I better find this fucking... No. She thinks that finding... Like we said, look at her best friend. She thinks finding corporations is stupid. This is the person she advised. Don't find big corporations. It's stupid. It's bad for the stockholders. Fuck the stockholders. What about what about what's bad for retail? How about worry about the people you're supposed to protect? Why why are you worrying about what 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 about the fucking stockholders in these big companies? Like I said, that's not what she's there for. This chick doesn't give a fuck about us. This chick cares about no one but herself. It, it's truly insane, my friends. This lady, like I said, this lady is nothing but just garbage. And then I don't know if you guys saw the Powell freaking. I mean, this is the thing. Everybody got so jacked up about, oh, man, the Doge is looking into into all this stuff. And then you hear Powell. And what's he saying that in the interview? Basically, if you're poor and living paycheck to paycheck, you're the only one that's being hurt by inflation. But you can still drive your car and you can still eat. So eh? it's not hurting rich people and businesses are thriving. Why? Because we have PPP loans and we're handing out PPP loans to fucking all these businesses. So they're making a ton of money. There's a ton of job openings because they're putting up jobs for, oh, I have a degree. You could be, you know, a doctor, but we're going to pay you sixteen eighty an hour. We're putting up, we're putting up the, the signs for them. We're putting it all out there just so we can get PPP loans. But nobody's going to be a doctor and take a $16 an hour job. <laughs> like I said, it, it's truly insane. What is going on right now? Exactly, man. The, this whole system is set to keep us poor. I mean, if you guys look at since the pandemic, like I said, there's more billionaires go growing at a rapid rate than ever. And, and it's insane. Every one of these CEOs, that their wages go up every year, but yet our wages go up what? You get maybe a 1%, 2%. 3% raise if you're 5% if you did real good why they're getting 300% every year when they're already making millions and millions and millions like I said it's just crazy dude yeah Powell Powell was like a deer caught in the headlights man every single question he scapegoated dude he's like nah like well here was my favorite thing they're like he's like we're not gonna give any dates we don't know and in about five Four to five to ten to maybe 25 years, you guys will be able to look back on all of our decisions and then make your own your own conscious choice on that. It's like, what? So in 25 years when you guys are dead, we'll be able to find out what you did and then we'll be able to go, man, these guys were pieces of trash. Cool. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Shit's crazy, dude. And this is what our taxes are going to, exactly. This is what our taxes are going to, these people. We get to pay these people to literally take a two. I mean, think about that, you guys. She took a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bribe, and maybe what another five hundred thousand dollars in in stakes, and that's it. 
And that's what that's what your soul's worth is seven hundred thousand dollars. Not even a million dollars. You're selling out the people for a million dollars and on top of that we're paying her salary. Like I said, it's just like it's so ridiculous, dude. Good old Hester Pierce, man. I'm glad she said no, though. I mean, this is a good thing. This is one of the things that's amazing about this movement. A whole bunch of people. I had I had 1,500 people in my channel, and we all watched that meeting. And the second we saw that, every single one of us was like, we need to look into this chick. And what do you know? We now know another person who's against us. And like I said, now we know probably who's the mastermind in all of these, these loopholes, all these regulations, is this law firm. So make sure you guys look more into this Wilmer. They're going to basically... I have my Gary Gensler video coming out. I'll probably put it out tomorrow. I already finished it. I just didn't want to do this and then put that out too. I feel like it's a too, too much SEC. Too much SEC corruption in a day. So we'll space it out over a day. But like I said, man, this shit's... It, the swamp's running deep. It's running pretty deep right now. Well, I'm glad your health insurance is lower. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm going to pull this up every single time. We do a video also, just in case, just to make, because the CNS video that I made, I don't feel like has enough eyes on it, man. And it's, it's literally, everybody wants to know how all these things, all these derivatives, how they do this stuff. And it's like, this is the one, man, I'm telling you. People think I I'll post this at the bottom of this video also. Hopefully more people look into this. Because the DTC... If you come down here, it talks about how... This is how they make billions of fucking synthetic shares right there, you guys. And a document. I'll zoom in so you guys can read it. Apparently it's not. All right, this process is CNS, and it hides billions of counterfeit shares. If you guys want to read that, down to here. Give you a minute. I don't want to read it out loud, but like I said, it's a joke. They have so many different ways that if they run out of a liquidity in an area, they can make up fake liquidity, and in the end of the day, it's like... They're... In the CNS program, this is the problem. If you guys read more about this stuff, like I said, I have a video up on this, and it gets really retarded. They don't even care. So what you'll do is if you're a member in the CNS program, they don't even care what stock you're taking. It doesn't matter. In the end of the day, what it comes down to is, let's say you go in there and you borrow 17 different stocks. What it comes down to is this one short position is what you'll owe on the CNS program on their monitor. And this is where they get, and if you guys look, a lot of people are like, the self-reported short interest. If you look and read more about this article in the CNS program, the CNS program is housed by the DTC because they have all the real shares. And through this program, this is where they're getting the short interest, the self-reported short interest. It all comes through the CNS program. So it's insanely crazy. If you guys, like I said, if you guys haven't watched the CNS program video I have up, it's only got like 3,000 views. It should have like 35,000. It should be my most viewed video. It's literally the answer everybody's looking for on how they're doing this stuff. On top of it is the contracts. I didn't see Fidelity suspending trades. Do you have a link or anything we can look at? I mean, the thing is, is they're losing money. And that's what a lot of people, a lot of people are like, oh man, they're green. They're, you know, they might be green on the position, but they're red as hell in the derivatives market. They're red as hell to all these bank sales. They're red as hell to all these ISDA contracts. They owe all these people money. And there's one... This one, this is the one I want a lot of people to look at. Right here. I wish I could... F see if I can't find it. Let me see here. Bailout risk. It might have been that. 
Like I said, th this is the document everyone should read. Every single thing that this thing talks about. The problem is, I didn't want to go too into it. I'm going to break it down in a video because as you guys can see, it's 73 pages long. And I highly doubt you guys want to sit there and read 73 pages. So I'll make a video. I'm going to read every single page. God, I wish I could find this. I found the greatest thing ever to show you guys. Classic, I lost it. So stupid. But, uh... Come on, I was looking at now, man. But yeah, I'll post this on the bottom. But like I said, it talks about all these banks and how, like I said, it talks about how they knew about the Apex was going to fail. And they knew about gamification. All this, like I said, they knew about all this stuff. These brokers, payment for order flow. Another thing that people don't know about it's just like payment for flow. It's re rebates. There's all these things. There's all these incentives for these people to not give us the best deal, but take it for themselves. Like I said, this the problem with this entire government, this the whole market is it's conflict of interest from start to finish, from the the brokers to the market maker to the regulator. It, it, it's crazy. Like, I mean, we could break down the DTCC, but I'm sure every single one of you know about it. each one of the members of the DTCC by now. It's just crazy. But my Gary video, I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's going to make a lot of people, like, think one way or another about Gary. I mean, Gary, good old Gear Bear, man. I think he wants to help us out. I just think, like... The more I learn about him, I feel like he's just a little nerd. Like, he was a little nerd, you guys. I don't think he really is as smart as a lot of people think he is to where, like, he knows what to do a lot of the times. The more I read about him, I feel like he has good intentions, but he's like a guy that has good intentions, but not good execution, if that makes sense. He has rushed execution, which leads to poor execution. But at this point, like I said, Esther Pierce, complete trash. There's no, nothing good about this lady, my friend. Nothing good about this lady. I don't know. Does anyone have any other questions? I mean, I don't know. Everybody feeling good about the stock? Everybody have questions? Anyone want to know? Anything about AMC? I mean, yeah, they can suspend it if they suspect manipulation. But even if they did, could you imagine if they halted the stock or trade for like 10 days or whatever? We would come back buying that at such force, it'd be insane. I don't know if they'd really want to. I don't really feel like they it would benefit them to really do that, halt or suspend AMC in any way, shape, or form. I mean, if it hit a certain price, would it get delisted? I don't. I don't believe it'd get delisted. I don't think that they'd let it get to the price. Honestly, I think they'd halt it down to stop it to getting to the point to where it would need to be delisted or whatever. The thing that the thing that they'll probably do. See, I don't want to sit there and like I hate to talk about anything cell related or my personal opinion on anything like that because I don't want to sway anyone's opinion. I don't want anybody to lose any money at any point or time because I would feel bad if anybody took anything I said and was like, all right, well, this is this, but I I don't know, man. I don't want, I don't even want to get into it. Never mind. I don't even want to get into selling stuff. I just... I think what they would do is they'll pick a number, honestly, the government or somebody at some point, because the government sees this. You could tell by Powell's face 
that they know this shit's going on. They, they're looking into it, but they have no answers. Every single time they ask them a question, it was, we're looking into, they're basically just pushing everything off, pushing everything off, and then they're sitting there just printing, printing, more derivatives, more this, raise inflation, make everyone else pay for it as long as we can until it all comes crashing down is basically what's going on. They see the writing on the wall. But the problem is, is it's going to have to be controlled in some aspect because they can't. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, God, there's no way. There's no way. After everything I've learned, I've been here for a year. I've learned a lot. I've read, I can't even tell you how many hours I've looked into documents on any kind of SEC. I've read more SEC lawsuits and violations than more pe most people have ever read any kind of book, anything, any web visited websites in their life. I do this hours a day. And there's no way in hell that there is no that there's not synthetic shares. Like there is zero percent chance that there is no synthetic shares. There are synthetic shares like fucking Matt. The DTCC knows it. Like I said, the Doge knows it. I think when they went in, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna look into it." Powell's face told us he knows it. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna have to sit there during the squeeze. They're gonna have to let it get to a certain price, halt it down, do certain things where they're like, "All right." We maybe not completely fill every single one of these derivatives at once. The problem is, is if you look at the derivatives now, like I said, it was at six hundred and twelve trillion in two thousand fourteen. There's rumor that it's over a quadrillion now. I mean, think about that. Over a quadrillion into the derivatives market. How can you ever, honest to God, truly fix that? Is the problem? <laughs> so I don't know. Like I said. In my eyes, in reality, the way that it's set up, the way that the market should work, supply and demand, things of that nature. If we all owned AMC, I don't even care about anything else. Because in reality, if we all own 100% of the float and we were all willing to pay for what we were willing to pay for and to keep going and keep going and keep going, there's no reason AMC should be what it's at. I don't think people have sold. I mean, every single thing we look at, the OB, everything, man. It's showing us no one's selling. There's tons of people that have thousands and thousands and thousands of shares that I know personally. None of them have even thought about selling, especially now. You're not going to sell now. And the one thing that people need to realize too. All right. Most people are going to hit their, I, I believe, a lot of people are going to hit their one year part, you know, part, you know, since you've bought it pretty soon here. Within the next month, two, three months. So at this point, we get to pay. Eventually, basically, we'll be paying less taxes. Sweet. <laughs> the short interest is still at 21%, so it's the same as it was last year. And they had to put it all the way back down. So no matter what, like I said, it's gonna go, AMC is going to go back up. They still have to pay those back. Like I said, yes, those, those shorts can be in green, but in the end of the day, they have to pay it back to get that money that's in the green. Just because they're in the green and they're in count until they sell it or buy the share back, it doesn't matter. But, I mean, one of the things, I mean, I put that playbook out, man. We got to vote office, and like I said, we got to hit them in these banks. We got to get these banks, get our money out of them. Show these politicians, man, like, hey, if you're not going to sit there. I got that list, me and uh, Average Ape, we've made a, a pretty big list of everybody who's taken donations and things of that nature. I'm going to put that out here pretty quick. We got to start voting these pieces of crap out. And it's like... Even on Twitter, man, Elon Musk said it. How do we fix this? Somebody asked him, how do we fight back? Serious question. Vote them out, you guys. This is huge. We need to start voting these pieces of shit out. If they're taking money from politics, I don't care. People, this is the thing that everybody gets so fucking, ah, uh, Republican, uh, Democrat, who gives a fuck? I don't care what color you are. If you're hurting and stealing from me in the back end, who cares? You, he's a piece of shit. A piece of shit, whether it wears blue or whether it wears red. It's a piece of shit in the end of the day. Get it the fuck out. Flush that shit down the toilet and get a new one in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta stop... Being so laser, being like, eh, fuck it. No. Get these dudes out. Find out which trashes we need to get, give the boot. Get them out. 
Get people in there that start caring about us. Because no one gives a shit about us. We already see that. You heard Powell. You literally heard Powell tell you guys, you can eat and drive, so stop bitching. Well, I don't want to eat and drive. Maybe I want to retire. Maybe I want to go on a vacation. Maybe I want to do something. Like, what? Like I said, dude, he literally said, the rich are fine, so we don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. Our own government told you guys they don't give a fuck about you. That should fucking piss people off, dude. Could you imagine if they would have done this in the past? People would have been revolting and fucking riding in the streets, dude. And we're just sitting there like, uh, -uh. whatever, I'll go watch Matt Coors tomorrow, watch the fucking line and buy his fanny packs. Yeah, he made a fanny pack. I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> like I said, I mean, you guys, we, we got to start caring, man. We got to care. We got to do certain things. And if we don't, we're going to be in this revolving door to where it's like, I'll sit there all day long. I don't give a fuck. I love exposing the shit. I'll continuously show you guys every single way that they're finding loopholes in gray areas. But that's the thing. Every single one we find, you find out the next day, by the way, they got this in case this fails. They got this in case this fails. They got this in case this fails. And then they got head funds. And these people writing these rules... To, fucking, to go work at Citadel, or they go work at the SEC right after, and then they go regulate them. Right, at, Like I said, this this Wilmer law firm, we all need to check out, because it's completely, completely corrupt, dude. I mean, it's insane. Let's see if I can't find all this stuff I wanted to show you. Should have been looking at this the whole time. Here you go. Here we go, you guys. Sweet. <laughs> All right. So the course of the crisis, like I said, is the contracts. This gets right into is the contracts and the derivatives. Um, basically, the theory is that large banks and other large firms were dangerously bound together through a non-transparent web of derivative exposure. Like I said, before the dot, before Phase Five and the Dodd Frank Act, these guys were writing these freaking is the contracts. Think about this. They would write in this to contract. So basically, a, a, law, a market maker, a firm, a broker, whatever, they would call up a bank on the phone, okay? On the phone, say, hey, <laughs> I need you to write me a contract that you sold me a million shares and then I paid you this, okay? And then go ahead and put that in, in your desk. Put that in a fucking file cabinet. Put that in a drawer, okay? And then they're just jamming this. Now, imagine how big this file cabinet is at this point. Because no one's checking on these, dude. People are like, how, how the hell did it get to 600 trillion? It got to 600 trillion because these file cabinets were full of ISDA contracts were exploding at the seam and they ran out of office spaces. They had to put that shit on disk, man. <laughs> like I said, man, they have that stuff on floppy disk at this point, dude. At this point, ah, it's crazy. They have so many is the contracts, so many of these derivative markets that they're sitting there. Like I said, it's over a quadrillion dollars. The shit's insane. But basically, the Dodd Frank was supposed to stop this by doing a central clearinghouse on top of all that. And then in phase five, because it turns out the clearinghouse was a piece of trash. So they ended up doing phase five because the clearinghouse ends up being corrupt and getting paid off too. So then they end up doing phase five and now they're like, oh, we need a regulatory body to watch it. And who watches it? The SEC. Well, if the SEC is watching, watching the deposits on these, these ISDA contracts, we're in the same spot. We have the same people writing the ISDA contracts, making sure that the deposit for the ISDA contracts is actually going into the accounts. Well, how do we know that that's really going in there now? If the SEC, we're finding out his pieces of trash, and they're taking, they're taking money, they're working for heads for our law firms that are just getting them out of, uh, nonstop getting them out of these. Uh, it's crazy, dude. Like I said, it's, just, it's crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Look at this guy. I mean, and the, just look at the faces. Like, you can just tell. You can just tell. Like, all you need to do is look at these people, and you just know. But hold on. Every one of them. They're just... Like, why do we have dinosaurs? Every one of these guys is dinosaurs. Why can't I find this membership list? <laughs> Jesus, right.
they're all these just grandpas, dude. Oh my god, I'm not even, I don't even care. Go look them up if you haven't seen these guys. I mean, is this real right now? Jesus Christ. I ain't gonna worry about it right now. Whatever. Like I said, Hester Pierce, though, big piece of trash. Yeah, Goldman and Sachs is. That's the thing, too. Like, Goldman and Sachs. That's where Gary Gensler came from. He worked there for like 16 years. Gary, uh, yeah, they're, they're leveraged 136 to 1. So, like I said, these guys are just writing these over the counter derivatives contracts like no tomorrow, dude. Just fuck it. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> These guys know about it. They've been writing about it forever. And all this stuff is over the counter. It's all off exchanges. So it's like none of us see this. But like I said, these acceptance wave, like, and if you sit there and go. So. A lot of people, basically, blue collar crimes refer to the crime that most likely committed by people from lower class. <laughs> well, white collar crime refer to crimes that most likely committed by people from upper higher classes. So as we all know, <laughs> fucking blue collar crimes, you, you steal a snicker bar, you get five years. <laughs> you know, oh no, you know, but God forbid these guys, these white collar crimes, which is what all of these stupid things are. These are all white collar crimes, and on top of that, they could just sit there and say, I'm not guilty. I'm just going to pay a fine and don't write down, don't put it on my record. And then, if you do put it on my record, like I already have 50 violations with Citadel, make sure you find me each time less. <laughs> Still. Like I said, it, it's crazy, man. I don't understand. I don't understand how regulators, like I said, this girl literally works for this company and they hate regulation. How the hell does that make sense? Where is this idiot? This, they just hate regulation. You're like against regulation in every sh sh way, shape, or form. Like I said, if you guys do get time, you should read some of her book. Because her book, I mean, it talks about everything, man. And it's funny. Like, her point of view on some stuff is hilarious. Where's this one? No, that's not her book. Where's her stupid book? I must have closed it out. I must have closed it out. I'll repost it. I'll refine it. But yeah, her book, it talks about like her point of view on hedge funds. The derivatives market, her her point of view on the Dodd Frank Act. Basically, she's saying like everything. <laughs> All regulation stupid. Self regulation works way better. This, like I said, this chick's gotta go. This chick has gotta go. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, you see why she said no to transparency? And she already did before. This girl's been against transparency her entire life. And why would you not? You guys already see the problem with these ATS systems. So it's like, why would she say no to that? Why would you not want more transparency on these ATS systems? These ATS systems are basically dark. Like, they're just a dark pool. It's just basically another dark pool. It's like I said, it's just stupid. Hi, Dave. No, it does not, man. The rabbit hole never ends, dude. And it's crazy. Like I said, it's just to a point where why is every single person connected to another person, connected to another person, connected to Citadel, connected to a regulator, connected to a bank, connected to this? In the end of the day, the person who should be regulating this is a just a government, a straight-up government entity that has nothing to fucking do with the market. Why the hell are bankers in charge of a regulator? Regulation. Why is this clown even on the SEC? I mean, look at her face. Doesn't that tell you everything? You know. 
Criminal. Look at that shit. <laughs> Why does everyone hate Lou? But that is true. Lou, Lou, I, I don't hate Lou, but he is a lot of trust me bros. But that's why I'm here. Because I, you know, I'll tell you what his trust me bro actually is. A lot of people he used to talk about. If you read about the CNS program, everything Lou used to talk about, he, th he basically just talked about the CNS program. Just didn't say the terms of the words for it. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna get her off the screen here. Put on anything else. We'll just put up for now, we'll put up her, her payment. The cost that it is to bribe her here. So everyone knows. 250k. <laughs> oh man. Shit's crazy. I think what I'll do is I'll like open up a space call or something. Here's the thing, if we don't mow ass in 2022, man, the size of it, when it does mow ass, would be, I fucking think, insane. I don't think they could, even if they wanted to halt it at that point, they could stop anything. I don't know what it would get to. That's, a, like, that's the thing. I don't know how much longer they can honestly make this go on, and if they do make it go on, when we finally do, like, dude, good God. I can't even imagine all this stuff. Like I said, man, I have a hundred percent faith in the squeeze. AMC, if AMC was debt free right now, which I get, that's a lot of hurdle for them. But fuck, man, if they just came up with like Ape Coin, whatever the hell, AMC Coin, like there's things they they can do still to get out of debt, to where we can, like I said, the popcorn, Saudi Arabia. There's so much shit. I don't even know what the hell the box office is at. It was over 304... I think it's at like 350 higher than that when I looked last time. Check it out here quick. I mean, box box offices, man. 350 million. We're already higher than we were all of last year. And we're three... four weeks in. I mean... I think that GameStop, I mean, fuck, you guys really want to send a message to the short people and send a message and help out the company and put us in a better position, make that GameStop movie sell out, man. Sell that shit out. Even if you're not going to go, fuck it, buy a ticket. Who cares? Fuck them. It's basically like you buy it, you just get donated whatever to fucking AMC. Seven, eight bucks, let's go. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, you guys want to send a message, make a movie like that about the bullshit that they pulled off. Make a movie like that explode. How you send a message, you do it through the numbers in the box office. Whether you're a GameStop person, hate AMC, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if you go to Marcus at this point, I really don't. Go do it. Still sends a message that box office movie theaters, they're not dead. Like, fuck that, dude. These guys are crazy. I can't believe people are still shorting this, dude. I will be buying a ticket. I'll be posting right when I get there. I'm pretty jacked for that movie. See what they have to say. Oh. Check out the CNS program on their fucking website. Now... Just so you guys can see a couple more facts here on the CNS program after you see that it takes. So like I was telling you guys. So on the CNS program, it takes, makes billions of synthetic shares and it makes them have a one position. Now it's a long position and then you're supposed to be doing buy-ins. But what else? Let's go ahead and check out some more fun stuff here for you guys. This is also some more benefits of the CNS program. And you guys, this is on the DTC's website. So if you guys think I'm incorrect on anything, you're arguing not with me. 
You're arguing with the DTC. And you're arguing with their, literally, <laughs> all their stuff, dude. So, they're admitting how this is going on. Just so you know. But, back to the CNS. So, some of the benefits. <laughs> Let's check out this one. Close, alright. So, closing fail positions are marked to market daily and re with new transactions, which reduce risk. Uh, while CNS are automatically blah, blah, members can exempt, here we go. Members can exempt certain short positions to avoid segregation violations and effectively meet other delivery needs. So basically, even if they're super short in a position, if they have somebody else needing those shares, they still can fucking get, they can still give them the share. Basically, it's like it's like a naked short, a legal naked short. Then this is real. All right, cash. Di now listen to this: cash dividends, stock dividends, bond interest, or uh, actions are automatically debited or credited to uh, CMS members' accounts when open fail positions. With open fail positions, you guys. So everybody's sitting there like, so they're still gonna get the dividend. They're still gonna get all that shit, even with their fail position. So their naked position is still gonna get the dividend. <laughs> Like, it's, it's crazy. And at that point, see, at that point, the company should know, you would think. Hey, we've given out this many dividends. But like I said, the fact that they still have the right to one is beyond beyond stupid. Oh, man, this stuff's crazy. Hold on, there's this... I can't... We'll get into that. I don't want to keep getting into too many different things after we went down the Hester Pierce alley, but there's a... Here, actually, if I get... This is seeing as fucking... Some vegan... I need no damn sound. Lower short. I hear myself talk. Alright. So, like I was saying, before when the CNS program was created, you had the NSCC, and they were in charge of this. So basically, if somebody needed to do a buy-in after six days, they were supposed to pay it back. But after that happened, or after they passed that rule, basically they could no longer enforce that. Well, where is it? Okay. Market make so this is basically questions asked directly to the SEC. Okay, here's their here's their answer. Uh, basically, uh, not gonna worry about that. But it says market makers may maintain temporary short positions in CNS until such time there is significant trading to flatten out their position. The NSCC does not have the authority to execute buy-ins on behalf of its members. <laughs> so basically, like I said. In the end of the day, they passed a law that made it where they no longer can regulate. Think about this. They made it where they can no longer regulate the NSCC, this NS, or CNS program. But at the same time, they can create phantom shares with it. And nobody's, nobody can do anything about it. <laughs> what? It's crazy, man. Like I said. It's crazy. It's just, uh, it's just a big joke, man. Like, very short position. Hold on, it gets better. Like, <laughs> like I said, the DTC everywhere you turn, the DTCs fucking helping all these things out. Now, here's what I was talking about. So basically, after a certain amount of time, the NSCC is supposed to tell these people, hey, you know, after six days. You have to return that position. 
But it's not, now they have no authorities. Now, think about this. This was back, so you guys, this was back when the NS, CNS program. This was in 2000, this file right here. This is a file from the SEC. Straight up in SEC. They did an investigation, and I'll, I'll repost this on the bottom too if you guys want. Or, or just check this video out. All the links are on the bottom. But anyways, so this was way back in the day, right? Way back in the day when this thing first started coming out. Way back in when it first started coming out, there were 6,000 notices of intent to buy it, right? 6,000 people a day were supposed to be like, hey, I need to buy these shares back. Out of those 6,000, now this was 10, 20 years ago. Out of those 6,000... 20 of them resulted in execution. So all out of those 6,000 that were supposed to buy back a day, 20 of those people bought back. So that means thousands of those people that were supposed to do their fucking repay their phantom shares a day haven't been doing that. So these phantom shares a day in the CNS program has been just booming, dude. Like, who knows? This is probably thousands and thousands and thousands. Like, this... This is probably millions. There's probably millions of these at this point. But only 20 of them a day are getting fucking executed. Like I said, the, the CNS program is the biggest joke. And then on top of this, like I said, I wish I wouldn't go so fast right here. But this is how it works. So basically, it's netting. So what's going to happen here? This is how. This is exactly how it works. So basically, you have all these brokers because everybody goes. Where did all these brokers get all these shares? Or where did the you know the market makers get all these shares? Basically, anyone who's in NISDA, where do they get these shares? If they don't, well, they go into the CNS program. They dip into this piece of crap, and right here, in, in, where you see the vault, is basically at the DTC. So the DTC houses all the real shares. Like basically, as you guys all know. Everybody, when you buy a share, you get a digital, basically a digital receipt. Obviously, you're not getting the share. You're not getting the paper receipt. You're not getting the real share. You're getting a digital receipt. So the real shares are basically housed in what they have as this DTC vault, basically. So and everybody's talking about Lou and his trust me, bro. I'm sure you, now that I'm going to go break this down a little bit, you'll understand some of the things he was talking about with the vault and the DTC and these brokers while he's talking about this. Basically, like I showed you, what they'll do is what of these brokers will go in. It does not matter how many, what stocks, okay? So I can go in there if I'm a broker. Let's say I want to borrow seven or eight different stocks. It's going to net my position in this is one position. As a net is as, as a long position or a short position. It doesn't give a fuck what I took because it's called continuous net settlement. They don't give a shit. What they care about is the net amount. They care about the dollar amount. The rest is credit. It, it, it's it's like a credit system. As long as you can pay that back, as long as you're giving that money in to continuously push the net, the settlement, or all this cash to continuously keep the flow going, you're good to go. So basically, these guys are coming in. Like I said, they're they're gobbling up shares at how many fucking one of these things, and then twenty out of six thousand, we're doing buy-ins at a time. Who's doing buy-ins now when you don't even have to do nothing? You know what I mean? It's like so these guys are just jacking this money. They're just making these shares, putting it in this vault, and every single time So the way this works, so back in the day before netting was involved, basically the way this worked is they would have to call up a broker. Well, basically brokers used to hate each other. So some brokers would have to call another broker and say, hey, can you call this guy? Because I know he's got shares, but he won't deal with me. So can you go ahead and deal with it? So as you guys can see, before all the CNS program... Hold on. Where the hell is it? It was like this. So, you know, you had people that hate each other and wouldn't deal with business. So it was like a mess. You had people cross-checking this, cross-checking that. So they were going, all right, how can we fix this? How can we make sure? Because in the end of the day, if you guys haven't noticed, the way that this market is currently structured... Is it structured to make it so no matter what, there's always liquidity. Notice that. There's always liquidity. Payment for order flow, over-the-counter, CNS program, is the contracts, forward contracts. I mean, the list goes on. Family offices. The list goes on and on and on and on. There's always the dark pools. There's always, like I said, ATSs. There's everything. It's just crazy. There's always a form of liquidity to make sure that no matter what, when I push or you push that buy button, it goes through, no matter what. And like I said, it's a continuous... It's like a casino. It's Like I said, it's a Ponzi scheme. 
it, this is exactly what a Ponzi scheme is. This is why Bernie Madoff made that. Like I said, my first video I made, dude, this guy, his thing, basically, if you look at how the market's set up, it's set up to where we need to continuously keep buying, they need to continuously keep taking money from us to pay Paul, to pay Piper. There's, it's always, you need more investors, you need more of this, you need more of that, to pay off old debts. It's always pay off old debt, pay off this, because they owe quadrillions in these derivative markets. And the problem is, is before, they're able to hide this stuff. Before, none of us were looking into this stuff. People would write articles, but all, most of us would look at these guys like, oh, these guys are fucking, these guys are fucking crazy, or they're conspiracy artists, or, you know, they're fucking nuts, or, and then everybody in the media would get just, you know, just blast these people, just blast these companies, these, all these people writing articles telling the truth to where it was like, all of us would be like, yeah, they're idiots. And then you come to find out all these media companies are sponsored by Citadel, sponsored by all these people, to where it's like, no, these conspiracy people. See, if you guys want to do DD, one of the things that I, I highly recommend, anytime you're going to look something up, one of the things I've noticed and where I get most of my information is I always Google whatever I'm going to Google. I always do the year 2008, 2000. Like so, if, let's say I'm going to do family offices, I'll type in family offices 2008, 2009, 2000 to 2014, 15. Because in that time period, so much stuff was coming out. All these truths were coming out. Fines were coming out. Violations. Not Frank Act. They were actually having to address all these things on the back end. And basically, they had to tell the truth on all these certain things to where it's like nowadays, if you look at, you know, anything from 15 and beyond, most of these rules are just changing. How can we fucking hide all this bullshit? It's really what all it is. How can we hide this? How can we continuously hide this? It's just crazy to me. Like I said, it's, it's unbelievable. What the hell is this one? Oh, yeah, so, and then, like, so, and that's the other thing. Like I said, with these continuous forms of liquidity, most of these problems and all this stuff with the CNS pro uh, program and all these things started coming out when the stock bar uh, borrow program came out. So that's another massive form of liquidity. Like I said, it's to the point where none of this is regulated to where it's like, all right, how bad are you guys? As you guys, like you said, fucking Goldman Sachs is... Its exposure is 136 to 1. Think about that. How the hell are they functioning? Could you guys imagine... Imagine, imagine if you woke up tomorrow... And you were fucking $30 million in debt. You just woke up tomorrow... You got, you got fired. Didn't matter. You woke up here $30 million in debt. How the hell would you go get a loan? How in the hell would somebody say tomorrow... The next day be like... Yeah, you're good, dude. Don't worry about paying us. But that's what's going on with these banks... Because everybody knows if fucking the banks fail, the economy fails. They can't let it happen. So in the end of the day, you make the bad, the big, well, the banks are the evil ones. So what do you do? You make the hedge funds, you make the market makers, you hire the same fucking law firm. These piece of shit. Good old Wilmer Hale. Biggest fucking tool bags on the planet and... There you go. They write They write the laws so they'll know how to get around them. <laughs> like I said, th exactly. It's, it's basically, it's 2000. In reality, man, it's 2008 on steroids. Because if you got, I don't know if you, I'm sure almost all you, if not all of you in this thing have watched my family offices. The second they did regulations, the second they were like, all right, this is how we're going to stop it. All right. Family offices. I mean, think about. I mean, think about that. There's over. There's what six or four thousand. There's four thousand two hundred and fifty something fucking family offices in the United States. I guarantee you, all what at least three thousand, if thirty five hundred, if not more of those, are hedge funds or old hedge funds. Now think about that. A lot of people when they ask me right away. But, you know, do these guys have algorithms? Do these hedge funds or these family offices, do they have algos? Do they have computers doing stuff for them? Yeah, they're, they're old hedge funds. Of course they took their algorithms and shit with them. If you got, I mean, the thing is, is I have another family office video I'll put up here soon. 
but it's basically going to, I'm going to show you exactly how these family offices operate. And yeah, they got, they got algorithms. They basically go off borrowing and borrowing. Like the amount of money that these guys have is just fucking nuts, dude. I mean, you're talking, like I said, in the entire world, hedge funds right now have $3.4 trillion in assets, all hedge funds. Family offices have seven point six trillion. They more than double all the hedge funds, and they're not even regulated. No one looks at them. They don't have to fill anything out. The same regulations that they're exempt for, as we learned, the stupid ass, uh, the stupid law firm here actually got Citadel exempt for the same fucking rules. Like I said, it's to the point of just, it's crazy. Yeah, see? They want to be reinstated the order of exemption. That's exactly what this application is. And like I said, you can see that they've done this ever since the rule came into place. And it's like, if you're going to allow these people to just go ahead and file for exemption on all the fucking rules, what are you guys even writing them for? You're letting the bad actors, the people who are breaking the rules, apply for exemptions from them instead of kicking them out. Like I said, instead of these fines, instead of jail, which they should be going to prison. I mean, think about this, you guys. In what world does this make sense? You, Like I said, you steal a Snicker bar, you get theft. These guys steal shit, then they get nothing. They could crash. They could literally destroy the United States economy. And no one cares. They literally don't give a fuck. I mean, think about how truly scary that is. Every at a, at, at the you saw it on the flash crash. I don't know if you guys you know read Flash Boys. Dave Lauer was involved in that, and it's an amazing book and involved in the flash crash. Like I said, and the click of one button, these fucking piece of shits can destroy the economy. Everyone's hedge pensions, everyone's retirements. I mean, Jesus, dude. And no one cares. Like, these regulators don't even care. They're working for him for $250,000. So, like I said, I mean, Hester Pierce, you're garbage. Complete trash. Citadel getting fucking exemptions. It's a joke. Every single time that we sit there and get transparency, like I said, you got this law firm, you got these other people helping them get around those transparencies. So, I don't know. Shit's crazy, man. My bodyguard is my M4, my friend. <laughs> it's, it's right on my wall. Exactly. Fear is not fear is never factor, Joe Rogan. Yeah, basically Paul says forget young people, dude. Like I said, man, this is one of the main problems with the way we're set up, man. Why in the living fuck is everyone in office seventy five years old dying? And can't answer a simple fucking question. Like, we need to get some young blood up in this shit. These guys can't even... They don't know how to use technology, but they're in charge of it. I guarantee you none of them know how to write a thing of fucking code. They probably couldn't even look at a thing of data and know what the hell they're reading. Why aren't I in lob, man? Too boring, dude. Fuck that. This mag poor is a shill. You know my feelings on that kid, my friend. I don't want to keep bringing up the cores. Mag cores. Kid's a clown. Oh, yeah, I'm sure Nancy will figure out a way to get reelected.
I don't know, man. That's it's a hard question on on the short interest when they cover there. I mean, one of the things you can look at. So when they're covering or whatever, when everything's going on, one of the things you guys can actually go do is pull up the stock grid, pull up the dark pool, and you can see the covering and when they're borrowing. We actually go down and look at this bar. So you can go ahead and check that out during the squeeze if you want. Borrow or borrow return. Just in case, I mean, a lot of people have asked me that question about short interest and squeezing and things like that, but there you go. Yeah, I'll put that remix on another video, man. I love that song. My buddy makes some good songs. I try and make videos when I can, man. I got a wife. Full-time job, dude. And I got to spend a couple hours doing DD. I don't want to become, become a YouTuber that just streams every day and has nothing to fucking talk about other than... What everyone else talked about on the one article that day, and then I'm streaming the fucking line all day. Yeah, I can. I'll stream, dude. I'll, I'll for sure stream, man. I ain't going to work that day. Probably never going to work again, dude. I'll be going jack. I'll be jacked when we're fuck. I'll be on for sure. We're gonna have fucking Eminem in the background, dude. Little Tupac going. We'll be going. We'll be having a good time. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. I, I heard that from Boston. It's looking for a wife, man. Any girl, anyone's interested. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Al from fucking Boston. Yeah, I almost did an interview with Al from Boston. Then me and him had a chat. And I was asking about why he believed it would go to a million dollars. And all this stuff. And he couldn't answer my questions enough to where I was like, alright. I had to cancel the interview. Just kept telling me he doesn't know and to talk to Kyle. And then I went to talk to Kyle. And Kyle didn't have some answers I needed. So, I don't know. Man, I have no idea when we're going to squeeze, dude. I have no clue. I mean, they're passing regulations like faster than they've ever been, so. Hopefully they start enforcing some shit. But like I said, if they really want to start fixing this market, like I said, we need to start seeing jail time. We need to start seeing people actually getting fucking suspended. Can't have just four. Citadel can't have 50 fucking violations in three years and then get... Nothing but fines that are less than 
they've paid like not even a billion dollars, but they've stolen how many hundreds of billions, trillions? It's like I said, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I'll live stream during the squeeze, my friend. Yeah, I can't believe Evergrande's still going, dude. Like, that just shows y'all, like, like I said, everything is so... Though there's, like, I give everyone those extra little days. There's no way that they should have been... They just got done not paying their, uh... Was it last week they had to pay coupons out and they didn't pay those out? Like I said, it's like, at some point, like, how the fuck are they still going, dude? And then I laughed how they're like, Evergrande's like, Hey... Please don't sue us. I can't believe people aren't suing the living shit out of them right now. I would have been on it that day, dude. The second they said don't sue me, I would have been all over that, dude. No, sorry. Is Doge still investigating the hedge funds? Do you really care? <laughs> Did you see Powell? Dude, I think they I think they investigated the hedge funds, man. And they saw how fucked up this was and was like, and then you saw his reaction. I have no answer for that at this time. I have no answer for that at this time. Yeah, inflation might go higher, but fuck them. Fuck everyone who, who's not rich. <laughs> the Doge ain't gonna do shit. Yeah, Evergrande should have crashed fucking way... Yeah, back in September, dude, way long ago. I don't know how the fuck... See... There was this one person, I can't remember it was, it was a banker, and it was one of the, uh, like, he was a massive banker, and he was like, and it made sense, and it's stupid, because he goes, you know, cash is, you know, cash is a good thing to have, but credit's better, because obviously, if you look at these banks and all these other people, they got all this credit to where they can just borrow fucking trillions of dollars anyways, they don't need it, so who cares? It's like I said, problem is, most of these, like, you know, you got, most of these billionaires, most that, yeah, they're billionaires and stuff, but most of, they don't have billion in their account, things of that nature, they have billions, and most of it's in assets, stocks, you know, retail properties, things of that nature, it's not like, everyone just got this straight cash on them, but yeah, we're printing fucking more money than ever before, where the hell's it all going? Oh, I know where it's going. It's going right back into the fucking banks, into the repo, so then they can make even more money on the money that they fucking printed, you guys. <laughs> like I said, it's just a constant joke of like, alright, we're gonna fucking do this, make you guys pay this, and we're good to go. It's crazy, dude. Honestly... <laughs> I don't know what happened to America, my friend. <laughs> Shit, fuck. Well, yeah, and that's the other problem. Citadel's so tied to all these politicians. That's what I'm saying. The way you get them out is you got to get these politicians out, man. So I'm saying you got to vote those politicians that they're out. They're tied to out. <laughs> so at that point, that's when the Doge and them will really help us. The problem is, is most of those, they have all these guys with bribes. They have all these guys, you know, with fucking why, everything, man. The, these guys have all taken bribes where, if, like you said, Citadel goes down. Well, they're not going to fucking do anything to hurt Citadel or make them go down. Because they'd go down with them. So we gotta find out these people that are involved with them. Get them the fuck out. I mean. I wish we. I wish like. What would be sick is if we had. A whole bunch of apes that could vote for an ape. In a state. But obviously we don't have so many apes in one concentrated area. To where like we could. You know. Put somebody in the office. But. You said we gotta start looking at these people that are just corrupt as fucking helping these guys and get them the hell out. I mean, 3 to 800, that's not life-changing. For some people, that is life-changing money, man. 
Some people got a whole bunch of shares. Some people got 30, 40, 10,000 shares. I've seen people with like 14, 15,000 shares at 800 bucks. That's a lot of money, man. But here's the thing. You already know they have 106, like I said, million that they say that they owe. On top of that, I already showed you guys on the CNS thing. The second that trading volume spikes, that was their loophole. Well, they're going to have to close that loophole on the CNS program. So when we squeeze, they're going to have to buy back in some of those too that nobody's accounting for. And if we fucking do it right, well, at that point, with a stamp to buy back the CNS on top of it, there's uh, most of their ISTA contracts are going to default. So... The one thing is, it's, when all this happens and it goes off, these banks are going to be so fucked because of these ISTA contracts will default. They're going to lose out on a lot of money. And that's the problem. And that's why these banks are doing every single thing that they can to make sure Citadel themselves doesn't go down. But the thing is, is a lot of people... All right, here's the thing. There's a difference between, I made a video about this before. There's a big difference between a MOAS and a short squeeze. The short, a short squeeze is going to be all these people covering their short position. What the MOAS is going to be is when we take down a market maker on top of that. Because now the synthetics that's attached to that market maker on top of the shorts need to be covered. And now you're talking about the float being attached, you know, two, three times over. Now, if we get a short squeeze, five, eight, five day hundred, maybe. If we get a MOAS, it will be way more than that. In my opinion. Could be wrong, but I can't see a stock... To where they go, all right, here's 106 million shares you got to buy back. And then the market maker has all these. Because, you guys, we've already showed you in Rule 204 all sorts of things. Market makers have so many exclusions and so many exemptions from reporting. We don't know what they got. But pfft, imagine if they had to float two or three times over. What are the, What's going to happen when they have to buy back 1.2 billion shares? A million shares. Even if, even if there was some off chance... Some, some by miracle chance that Citadel's only made, which there's no fucking way. <laughs> Just to say, by some miracle chance, Citadel only made like 50,000 or 100,000 or 100 million short shares. I mean, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way there's under 100 million shorts. We have bought so many shares over this year. There's no way retail didn't buy the float over it. One or two times over. And on top of that, how the hell are these institutions continuously <laughs> continuously adding to their positions? The only people the only people that I can honest to God see sell that have held the stock, maybe I had five to ten shares. And we're just like, fuck it and moved on. That's about it. But no ape. There is no apes that have sold. Especially after what we've went through. Nobody held nobody held on for five, six, seven months. Went through all that to get fucked up the ass for 12 bucks. 13 bucks. 20 bucks. Fuck no. And on top of that, the paying half the fucking capital gains, that half of it in capital gains tax, ain't no one selling, dude. Ain't no one selling. They're, they're not going to sit there and continue to bash AMC and spend all this time. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ. That... that sh Okay, I have to show you guys this just because I love it. And I love it. It made my day today. I gotta show you this tweet I threw down. It was pretty epic. I, I might have to frame this shit. It's pretty sweet. Where the hell is it? Here it is. This fucking... So this dude starts talking jazz. Classic. Retarded Charles. He comes out. He, he says we're losing. And I'm like, dude, I'm still green on the trades. Short interest is at 21, just like your inches from the ground winning. That's classic. That is a classic response. I just had to show everyone that one.
<laughs> oh man. But like I said, if we mow ass, there ain't no way in hell. We don't break eight hundred bug. He's on some crack. And that's coming from Bigums, dude. And all my videos are, you know, you tell them from a crackhead, bro. 800 bucks on a Moaz. Like I said, maybe on the short squeeze. Maybe. But I don't even see that happening. I mean, think about it this way. GameStop would... if they, Could you imagine what GameStop would have got to? Honestly, could you imagine what GameStop would have got to if they never did their bullshit? Think about that. And ask yourself that question. When they stopped GameStop when they did, what would it have got up to? Do you think it would have went up to 800? Do you think it would have stopped there? Do you think it would have broke 1,000, 1,500? What do you think would have happened? And now I know people can be like, well, there's less shares in GameStop, blah, blah, blah. More. But like I said, same type scenario. I mean, the thing is, it's like, you've seen shorts, here's the thing, you've seen short squeezes, a ton of them, go way higher than this, and, and they haven't had the situation that we have, so, like I said, this could go way higher, I, I don't know how, out of this entire time, Lou's been saying everything he's been saying, has been in on this forever, how are you going to say, I don't know, I mean, didn't somebody tell me like a month ago or something? The dude told me like 3,000 was his bracket. How does it go from 3,000 to 800? When. I don't. Here's my question. How does he go from 3,000 to 800 when AMC's in a better position than it's ever been? The short in interest report as high as it's ever been. And like I said, and now none of us are selling. We're all about to hit our capital gains. I mean, like I said, what the what? What did he say? I'm just curious because, I, like I said, I don't watch YouTubers. I'm just curious. What did he say has changed that that made him go from three thousand to eight hundred? If anybody knows, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. There's not enough. He says there's not enough money. Here, here, here's what I'll tell you guys. If there's over, there's not enough money to give us more than eight hundred dollars. You guys, oh, Jesus, there is way more than enough money in in the derivative market alone. There's over a fucking, like I said, over a quadrillion. If Citadel went under, I don't think you guys understand. If Citadel went under. All the derivatives that they hold, all the credit that they hold, all that money, all that that they hold, it, it, it's got to I can't even imagine all that shit. It's going to be like $100 billion, $200 billion minimum. If not, oh God, I can't imagine. That's a minimum because, I mean, he. I, I, it's more than that because he's funneled more than money than that to the Cayman Islands, you guys. I can't even imagine how much all that's worth. And I know that they were evaluated at $22 billion, whatever. That's bullshit, man. No way. There's like, like I said, there's quadrillions. There's a quadrillion plus in the derivatives market. They would, 75, okay, if there's over a quadrillion, quadrillion dollars in the derivatives market and 75% of that is fucking interest, interest rate swaps, they would just use shit like that. And pay it off. Like like I said, it would be fine. Eventually, they need a government bailout. They couldn't stop that. The, eventually, the government would have to get in. But there's trillions. They just got done. What did I just see? I just saw something about three point. How did I just see about three point three trillion dollars the other day? Something happened with three point three. How does happen like this? They just, somebody just, the camera, the hell, I'll, I'll find it, wait, wait, maybe this was, oh yeah, 3.3 trillion, okay, you guys, 3.3 trillion dollars in stock options, 
okay, alone expired on the 21st. And that alone, I was telling you guys, was pretty much is the contracts. It was the highest ever. So, they got $3.3 trillion they can at least fucking throw at us minimum, dude. And, and just options alone that they got. They're good. 800, 800 not, would not be the limit. The world would not run out of money. I don't even think the world would collapse at that point, man. 4.99 quadrillion, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dude, there was quadrillions of dollars. They they have way more than enough to pay us. Because you also got to think these banks are involved, too. It's not like if Citadel went down, the banks that are attached to Citadel would get fucked. And then they would have to cover shit. Or they would have to get a loan from the... Like I said, here's what would happen. So they all would go under. They would get fucking liquidated. Pay all that off. The banks that all that would have also have their debt. And on top of that would have to pay stuff off. And then eventually they would end up getting bailed out by the government. Because it's banks and they can't let it go under. We get our paper. No, these people that are saying 100k to 1,000 or a million. <laughs> I don't know if I think, like, that's, nah. I ain't gonna lie on that. That ain't gonna happen. I use Fidelity. I use Fidelity because they're their own clearinghouse, and they let me direct all my orders to a lit exchange. And for now, that's the main thing I care about. I can't get fucked over by a clearinghouse, which is nice. I can't have an apex problem. And on top of that, going to a lit exchange is basically the most important thing to me, man. Because, I mean, some people are uh, asking, so like, here's the thing. Like, we can do a little market structure quick. A couple of new people in here. I don't understand some stuff. We'll just do a little quick market structure thing. Bam. All right, now I'm gonna wait for this to go. Hold on one second. I'll wait till this catches up on the screen. One second here. But yeah, I mean, Fidel. I mean, here's the thing, man. All brokers suck ass. They're all in it to make money in the end of the day. And they all basically... They don't give a fuck about us. But the thing is, is Fidelity... We went to Fidelity and the, right away we said, Hey, we want the ability to go to the exchange. And it was, what, a month later and it was on there, you guys? The fact that they go, Alright, they give a fuck this much about it. it. It's that important to people. At least they gave us that. Weebles over here. Throwing everyone into the OTC market, dude. You got, like I said, Robinhood, Weeble, all that garbage gone. Fidelity, I mean, public. Public's got its own little bullshit. It's not payment for order flow, but it's basically like receipts and they get paid the same. Like I said, it is what it is. I don't trust public 100%. Unless I can sit there and tell it exactly where to go, I don't care. Like, I don't need public to tell me I'm going to send my stuff to this. I don't know or care. I, I, only way I know that my order is going to where I want it to go is if I have the ability to send it to that. So, that's the only reason, like, do I think Fidelity's a great company and loves retail and fucking, they're the one good actor in all this? Fuck no. They're all joke, dude. But, and then they gotta pick the best of all evils. Yeah, like I said. They're probably shady, but in the end of the day, they give me lit. They give me lit, and they're their own clearinghouse. So if if something happens to Fidelity and they can't clear it, well, then why the hell did you send me the order? I'll just sue the fuck out of them. I'll make my money that way. So no matter what, I'm gonna get my money from from Fidelity because they have no one else to blame. In the end of the day, remember that, you guys. They don't have an Apex clearing to blame. All right, we're just going to do this quick little market video because somebody was new here or whatever and asked how things, some things work. We're basically going to just do a quick little uh, 
little rundown on on why lit exchange not even really lit exchange are important but what these market makers have the abilities to do with your orders because i don't feel like a lot of people understand what happens when i what hap what happens after i push the buy button you know what i mean what what where does it go what path does it take well let's take a little quick journey for a minute here so basically i like td ameritrade man think or swim think or swim app you can go ahead and uh Send it to a direct exchange. You got to do a limit order, but you can send it to a lit exchange, which is nice. Uh, the, I like their charts. They have a shit ton of abilities. Um, Wired Ape on Twitter, man, he he can send you some sweet chart setups if you want to want to know a little bit about uh, TD Ameritrade. But okay, so basically, we're gonna do a quick thing. What happens when I when I push the buy button on my computer? Where does my order go? So, in most people, you know, in a common sense market, you think it'd go to a broker, and that broker should, you know, have the shares, because why the hell wouldn't the person I'm buying it from on their application have the share to sell to me? You would think that, yeah, that would make sense, but no. So, after it goes to that, it goes to a market maker real quick. Now, that market maker, this is what I'm talking about. The way it's set up is, this market maker gets your order, and he has, on top of it, if you add a box here, now add family offices. So you got family offices, they can add, send it to another market maker, they can internalize or self-clear, dark pools, ATSs, do ISDA contracts, or they can use an exchange. So the second that market maker gets that order, if you don't tell it where to go or direct route it onto a lit exchange, you're now giving the market maker these routes. You're giving them the free reign, basically say, hey, you can fill this order through any of these to make the biggest profit for yourself. And then what you're going to do is if it's on a payment for order flow, you're going to go ahead and pay the little change or a little rebate payment back to them, which will be their bribe, basically, for sending, instead of filling the order themselves, they can send it to the market maker. So, like I said, it's a big joke. They have all of the, oh, and on top of that, you also got to add, I'm sorry, I didn't even add this. So add family offices, exchanges, and at the bottom, you got to add the CNS program. So there's eight different ways the market maker can fill your order once he gets it. So that is why, like I said, direct ordering your route, or, or direct routing your order is insanely important. Because now you're limiting, A, how much money that market maker can make on your trade. Which that, like I said, if we want to beat Citadel, if we want to get that Moaz, if you want to get that those synthetics covered, you can't, we can't just, you know, you got to get on a lit exchange. You got to make Citadel lose money. So on top of that, it goes to the level 2 data, which everybody sits there and does TA. Well, if you're going to do TA all day long, and stare at this number two data. Everybody looks at the hundreds and all this stuff being passed back and forth. Well, why wouldn't you want that all to be as accurate as possible? That gets as accurate as possible by ordering to a lit exchange. So, like I said, certain things we can do, my friend. A lot of things we can do. But for the person asking about orders, there you go. Realistic price of a squeeze? I don't know, man. I don't want to answer that question. Said I would. I won't want to say something and somebody lost money. Either holding or somebody sold at my price and it went fucking way higher. So I can't answer that for you. Well, and that's the other thing too, you guys. Make sure when you sell, you do you direct your order to a lit exchange. But the thing is, is you don't necessarily at that point when you sell. Like right now, I tell everyone to buy in the IEX and then go to the LTSC and then go to the Nasdaq because when you're buying on the IEX, they are the only basically exchange out there. I mean. It's not like just ordering to a new, you know, the New York Stock Exchange is a good thing. You don't want to order to the right, you know, 
to any exchange. You got to order the right ones that are helping out retail because New York Stock Exchange helped out fucking Citadel become a powerhouse like they are. You got, I mean, like I said, it's just a joke. NASDAQ, NASDAQ does front running, uh, latency arbitrage. They do all that stuff. Just like the fucking these dark pools do. So it's like some of these exchanges are just as bad. But when you guys do sell your orders, make sure you sell it on a lit exchange like a NASDAQ would be the best way to do it. Your order will get filled first. Uh, your order will get filled first. So, I mean, on top of that, you're going to, I mean, if you're sitting there and during the squeeze and it's going up and down, up and down, up and down, you don't want to necessarily put it in an IEX. If there's no buyers on the IEX server or exchange, like I said, your order might delay as well. So you want to do one of those. A NASDAQ one is basically all the market makers exchange. Like, it'll get filled. But like I said, you want to do that on a lit exchange because your order will A, get filled. So like I said, that could cost you a shit ton of money if you're sitting there and I'll said 12 seconds go by, 30 seconds go by and your order gets filled. Because, I mean, there's going to be delays when you try and sell on these things. Let's be real. But the other thing is, so if you're selling on a payment for order flow system, it's going to go and let's say like somebody just asked, should I do a limit order or a market order? Well, let's say you're on a payment for order flow system and you sell at a market order. I mean, what do you think the guy's going to do? He's our enemy. He's going to try and fill that market order. You know, he's going to delay it and then fill it to where you got fucked. So like they said, you're putting it in charge, your order in charge of the, you know, in the hands of the enemy if you don't go on a lit exchange when you sell too. So just remember that. I don't want people waiting all this time, waiting to sell and all of a sudden they go and and then they get fucked because they sold. They, they left their shares in Weeble. So if your shares are in Weeble, man, it, it, it's probably worth getting out of there. Just saying. When it comes to trimming your balls, you got <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. <laughs> I I loaded a fucking video up and of course the commercial comes up about trimming balls. That was hilarious. There was this video too, like hold on, somebody sent me this. Let me try and find it. I get to me stupid video. I'm not gonna try and find it, dude. I got way too many. Never mind. But there's, it's a video of uh, the interview with Hester Pierce. Where the fuck is he? The SEC commissioner is edited and contributed to an entire book called Dodd Frank: What It Does and Why It's Flawed, which criticizes several SEC rules required by law. You wrote that the Volpe So if you guys want to like listen to this chick to just ream her, I'll fail. go ahead and post this on the bottom too. It requires too. regulators and industry to pour countless hours into an effort that may end the up... The job of parents. SEC commissioner is largely... To so I'll go ahead and post this for you guys sure at the bottom. The but yeah, it's basically them just ripping fucking Hester Pierce again. As you guys can see why.
What do you think about January 28th expiration? What, for what? Was there a lot of or something? Yeah, man, still live. I don't know how much longer we're going to go, though. I don't seem to have very many more questions. <laughs> I feel like I've covered quite a bit of stuff today. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Everything's corrupt as fuck, dude. I mean, I haven't even shown half the stuff on my computer, which is what's insane. Like, I have stuff where it's like, dude, I got bank accounts, dude. I got people at offshore, like addresses. I got all sorts of stuff, dude. It's pretty crazy. Man, I can't find any of my stuff. I got way too many damn tablets. I don't really know much about Moomoo, honestly. I don't, I don't trust Moomoo. Chris, man, you can, uh, you can use your cell phone to, uh, buy on Fidelity, still on the Lit Exchange. You don't have to use your phone anymore, dude. You can, uh, download the beta, and that's on the, the right of the application, there should be three little dots. If you click on that, you'll see the beta. Click on, uh, click on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, click on that. Turn it on. And then at the bottom, you'll see a little profile uh, picture, like a little person. Click on that. Go down to the bottom. It'll say trading. And it'll say uh, enable direct trade. Click that on. And then after that, you can actually use your cell phone. You don't have to use your computer anymore. So uh, it's real nice. Yeah, I can make a video on that, my friend. What's a lit exchange? I'm gonna send you this video. Let's chat. Is your point? Suppose I should check out the DMs. All right, my friends. I think we'll uh, 
guys got any more questions? It's been on for a long time. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know. I'll stand for about five more minutes. So no squeeze, of course, squeeze, dude. If there was no squeeze, I wouldn't be involved in this, my friend. I would have been out a long time ago. There's 100% a squeeze in my eyes. I think we're in a better position than we've ever been since we've owned the stock. We just got, you know, we're just finding out more corruption each day, that's all. I don't know. Boss asked me a lot to go on there. I don't know. I just don't have a lot of time to do a lot of stuff. I would love to go on Boss's thing, though. I love Boss Bond, so I hang out with him a lot. I'm in his Discord a lot. Uh, for Fidelity, you got to be on the beta. Spy crashes to 350. I mean, it's that right now. It's a, that's a pretty damn big crash, man. I'm not sure if it hit that though. Yeah, a lot of people, when they said when they transferred, their price got, I mean, I feel like they, they buy it at different times from transferring. So, I mean, who knows, man? Probably some more bullshit. Dude, I would love to go on Joe Rogan, dude. I would tell him all about the CNS program, is the forward contracts, dude. We go in the family office. I'd go in there. I'd be going there hard, dude. There is so much. There's way too much, man. Like, it's just crazy. Like I said, every single day, there's a brand new person. Brand new. Like I said, we definitely need to look into that law firm, you guys. Because that law firm, I'm telling you. I'm going to next. Well, probably my next video I'm going to do is find out every single person that came from that law firm. See which one of them went to the SEC. Which one of them went to Citadel. Because, like I said, every single one of these people, they go to this law firm, they get out of this law firm, and they go straight into the SEC, Citadel, Virtue, or a bank. Yes, they do, man. Joe Rogan wouldn't have a seizure. We get high first. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing: like a lot of people are thinking, I don't, I don't really think AMC is going to hit single digits. Like, I really don't see it going back down to single digits. Maybe, maybe not. But I see us hitting maybe twelve, bouncing back up. I don't really, I don't know. That that short interest ain't going anywhere. The short interest is they're going to have to fucking keep going up, 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 up. And then they'll cover and then we'll go right back into the 2030s. Like I said, don't sell now. Not financial advice, but like, Jesus Christ. This is, it's not, this is not like topped out. <laughs> Especially not right now. <gasps> Truly, I 100% believe in my heart. 70 was not the high. 72 is not the high for, for AMC. Did Charlie go off the deep end? Charlie, uh, I like Charlie, man. He has a lot of good DD, but yeah, he's uh, pretty angry, I guess. <laughs> he's pretty angry right now. He just... Here's the thing. A lot of people that do DD and spend a lot of time, like hours and hours and hours on this stuff, then put out the DD, and it seems like and then they get 3,000 views, 4,000 views. After we put 50, 60 hours of work into something, then you see idiot-ass Matt Course 
Come on, line get 60, 70,000 views to watch a, a line that we're not supposed to watch. <laughs> it's like people like Charlie after a year, myself after a year, we, we start getting angry and we have to put out videos where we call out certain people <laughs> to vent it out. <laughs> so Charlie's at that stage where soon enough he'll, he'll have his video out where everyone, he'll call out some people and then he'll be back to, back to normal. <laughs> He's a very angry dude. I don't know who said 500k per share in the first place, man. Tech Omega. But it ain't gonna hit that, my friend. I'm <laughs> sorry to say. No, I don't see AMC going to 10. John, I, th I feel like we'll, we'll bounce up about 12, 1220. We'll go right back up. Sit, up. sit there for a little bit. Go up to like 13, 14. I don't really see us hitting double, single digits, man, honestly. But I could be wrong, so never know. TA, TA doesn't seem to really work too well on this stock, as you can see, so <laughs> I could be wrong, too. Yeah, I'll have Boss Blunt come on here. I I can message him. I can go on live. But I, maybe you'll want to go live on Sunday with me or something. We'll talk about some stuff. I know a lot of people would love to listen to me and him talk about derivatives and things like that. I also want to talk to Dave Lauer. I might try and set something up with Dave Lauer. That I'd love to have another chat with him. I, I've learned so much more since the last time I had an interview with him. I feel like me and him would have a pretty dang good conversation. I love Dave Lauer. If you guys don't follow him on Twitter, make sure you do. Man, that guy... He knows so much information, it's crazy. Pull up Rockets Twitter. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put that up just for you, Ray. It's real. It's real, people. This is real. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me find it. <laughs> oh my god, this is real. Oh, this cracks me up. It cracks me up every time I see it. Like. If I'm pissed off during DD, I just pull this up and go, oh my god, this is real, dude. Moon gang. <laughs> I wonder why he chose a tiger. <laughs> why did, I mean, why did he pick an ape, dude? Why did he pick a fucking tiger? For moon gang, like what? <laughs> Kicks me up. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not a fanny pack, it's a pillow. Pillowcase or something. <laughs> Bruiser pillow. <laughs> oh, Alright, we'll get off this trash. Trey, Trey kinda, I don't know, Trey made his money on, on some options, man. He was a hype guy. I mean, I love Trey, man. Trey had me on this for, got me in this play hardcore, like. But yeah, obviously, when they all went to that one place and said the DD was done, the the DD was done for them. You guys, they told you they were quitting. So, Trey, here's the thing, you guys. When they made that video, I had Trey sent me a couple. A couple DMs that day. And honestly, I feel like when I made my video, it got to try. It, it did. Like, I could tell by his response to me that my message about them fucking using people, all this bullshit, they're driving cars. You could tell when him and Astro and, and, and Clown made that video. Like, Trey was, he, when they even asked him, 
what's your biggest fear is he goes this doesn't moon and everybody freaking gets screwed and and everyone thinks i'm this piece of trash and, and matt of course and the other you know matt just didn't care he goes i, I, I don't care I, I, bad information gets out but anyways so, so i feel like and then like i said when i had that conversation with him i feel like trey doesn't want to just make videos a lot of the problem is is like i was saying with my like with charlie and all these people a lot of people that watch or listen or are, are involved in this community their number one problem Nobody cares to pull up a video on DD. What instead you do is you go for hopium. You go for videos of people, yeah, it's going to hit this amazing price. Yeah, it's this. You go for hopium videos. And Trey says he didn't want to make hopium videos. He's not trying to sit there and, and milk it out anymore. So I think he's kind of like, all right, if people want to come watch me play games and stuff like that, I'm not going to make a hopium video just to have a, a video out for people. So, I mean, I, I mean, I get it. She got a ton of super chats during that video with him and Astro, dude. As he was my favorite part was he wouldn't tell us his money because he had to come out with a brand new video to show us how many super chats he's made. So in his new video, he could get more ad revenue and more super chats to show us how much he's already taken. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, a reveal video? This is real life, dude? God, you could tell, dude. Like, what sucks? You know what really sucks about that day? What really sucks about that day? So Astral, he called my phone. And I was at work. And I was inside my building. And he called me. And he was going to say, come do this video with me. But of course, I was right in work. And I just missed his phone call. Otherwise, I would have been on that video with all three of them. <laughs> and it would have been way different. And that's the other thing, too, man. Like, Trey's got complications. Exactly. Like, he's got health issues, man. Like, let the... D Trey's done a lot for us, dude. Like I said, he's not trying to sell hopium. That's good. Appreciate that. He's not trying to use you. He, he doesn't want to make us his product like someone else. He's not trying to sell fucking fanny packs. <laughs> With tigers on them. Not, not monkeys. Tigers. <laughs> not gorillas. Tigers. Not apes. Tigers. <laughs> this fucking guy cracks me up, dude. I believe it could if... I believe it could hit 10k if, if we get the Moaz. If we take fucking Citadel down, sure. But, like I said, we gotta not get a short squeeze. We need to get a Moaz squeeze. We gotta take down some of those synthetics. We can't just... Even if we like, if we squeeze, like I said, eight hundred to a thousand, like Lou's saying, if we just squeeze, maybe I guess to be realistic, but I still think it could go higher than that. I mean, like I said, other squeezes in the past have gone higher than that, and they haven't been in this kind of a situation. There's been squeezes that have been under twelve percent, and they went up over thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, and their floats were fucking still huge. So it's like, why couldn't AMC do it when we're twenty one percent? We're not. We're basically almost double what these other ones went at. So yeah, it could go over eight hundred. It could go over a thousand. Like that's the thing. Nobody knows. So anyone that gives you a price or tells you anything, like I said, don't let other people ever make that decision for you. Don't ask me, and then suddenly I get, I tell you three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, or whatever, and you're suddenly like, all right, there's my bracket. That should never be what it is. But like I said, my conviction is higher than it's been ever since I've owned it for a year now. The number I thought a year ago, I definitely think it can hit now way more than I did before. Our number one goal, though, like I said, our number one goal is got to just get AMC out of debt. It's out of debt. The short, short thesis on AMC is dead. No one's going to keep shorting it, and guess what? We're going to buy it up, and boom, they get fucked again. Al from Boston is a clown. 
We're not gonna hit a million dollars a share. There's not like enough money in the world to hit a million dollars a share, dude. And they're not gonna destroy or bankrupt the economy just to make it a million a share. Unfortunately. It sucks, but at the end of the day, do you need a million to share anyways? We just got to make sure when we get our money, we're better than they are. Use your cash for positive stuff. Not financial advice, but as you guys can see, with BlackRock, housing industry, everything, it's about to burst. But their goal is to make it to where you don't own anything. You rent for the rest of your life. They want you paying for the rest of your life. So their goal, like I said, property is value most one of the most valuable things you guys can ever get. Land, you know, gold obviously is always good, but land in the end of the day, housing, you know, that's now like I said, not financial advice, but there's that's there's a lot of money in that you guys, because I know what a lot of people are going to want to you know look to get out of this market after a Moaz. I mean, that's the thing. See, here's the thing. And that a lot of people don't understand this, too. And this is another reason why they can't. Like, so, if you, let's say you let AMC Moaz, G GameStop Moaz, let's say you let us all blow, shit all blow up. Well, guess what? They know what, what's going to happen. They're going to look at us and go, all right, they're going to now fucking do it again on the next stock. Because you guys, if you guys saw, what fucking bank was it? I think it was Morgan Stanley, if I remember right. I can't remember. But there was that bank. Was it City? Oh, it was City. It was Citibank. As you guys remember, Citibank, like two, three months ago, Citibank came out with that brand new program for hedge funds where it sits there and it tracks online sentiment. It's, you know, it reads through all of our shit, Reddit, all that stuff. So in case we ever get onto the next GameStop, they can sell it and get out of it already. See, they're already panicking because they know that if we end up winning this right now, we're going to have so much money, we're going to still have the ability to communicate, and, and what are we going to do? We're all going to find the next one and say, let's go fuck them again. And we should. They're financial terrorists in my eyes, dude. In the end of the day, that's what they are. It's a joke. They're destroying the economy from within inside of the economy. They're stealing people's retirement funds without them even knowing it. They're taking people's houses and giving them loans that are backed by, just like in the 2008 housing, you know, they'll link a whole bunch of loans together as we saw in the interest rate loans. These, these should, this should not be happening still. It should not have gone from 610 trillion to 4.9 quadrillion. Four, I mean, think about that, you guys. 4.9 quadrillion in the derivatives. That's in fucking insane. Like, that's not even a fathomable <laughs> number. I mean, write, literally, take a pen and piece of paper and write down a quadrillion, you guys. And now do a four of them. <laughs> it's literally ridiculous. But yeah, like I said, if you wanna wanna get it out of the fight, so that's the thing. We're either gonna keep going, do it again. Otherwise, if you wanna get out of the financial, you know, institution, get out of the stock market, out of that stuff, still make good money. Like I said, buying property, land, renting that out. Because I mean, think about it. In the end of the day, like that banker said, in the end of the day, having money is good, but having credit's better. And if you have a house, you have equity, you have all these things, you have people constantly paying it with renters. Well, that gives you more credit and credit and credit, and there you go. Start a business, boom. That way, even if your business is not making as much money, well, your rent, you know, your property rentals, things like that, are paying enough to hopefully where you're still making enough to where it doesn't matter. But you're your own boss, like I said. In the end of the day, financial freedom's amazing. Being your own boss, obviously, is every, should be everybody's goal. First thing I do when I get paid, yeah, I'll probably buy real estate. I've already been looking at a whole bunch of houses that I could buy, fix up.
see, the thing is, the key is what you want to do. If you're going to get into real estate, you got to really, really look at your town, city, your town, things like that. Instead of just buying, you know, look at this town that's going to be developing. Look, you know, always when you look at a town like that, you, you want to look at it and say, all right, what's this going to be doing in five years? Well, you know, mon is there a lake around it? Is there, you know, what what's going to attract people to this town? Can I buy a house right now that's worth eighty, sixty thousand dollars Because in Minnesota, there's places, you know, there's smaller towns that are, you can see already developing, but they're selling these houses for the price currently of, you know, this de smaller town. So that's one thing you want to do. Research your towns, see their development plans, things of that nature. Always grow your money. Always make your money grow on money for you if you possibly can. No, I wouldn't buy a new wife, man, because I'm telling you, no matter what, those wives get expensive real quick. <laughs> yes, I own GME also. I only got 30 GME shares, so nothing crazy, man. Shit was expensive <laughs> when I got in. Yeah, like I said, man, trust me, eventually you're going to see the stock market crash. I mean, the housing market crash, that shit's on the bubble like no tomorrow. That'll be a perfect time to get in. I can't see another thing that should boom or another field that should boom as much the up and coming. Especially with black, and that's the thing, I mean... You got BlackRock, like I was saying earlier, you got BlackRock buying up the whole world, so it's like fucking... <laughs> the demand is going to skyrocket pretty damn soon. Because like I said, their their whole goal is to just buy the whole world, have everybody owe them money and everyone renting from them for the rest of their lives. Because who the fuck wants to... Who wants to deal with these mortgages and shit like that? Who wants to deal with the possibility of somebody defaulting on a loan when they could just have you paying them for the rest of their life? They'll make just as much money, and when you die, oh well, they have no risk. Fuck them. They said, <laughs> but yet they want us to never be able to own our own thing. That's why, that's the problem. They tell talk to you guys about the American dream, owning this, owning that, having this, having that, having freedom to do this and that, financially, things of that nature, when at the end of the day, the whole system is designed to fuck you out of that exact freedom it's, and that exact dream. It's a joke. My AMC account, I have 2,000 shares between me and my wife. Yeah, I know my mic sucks, dude. I haven't been super chatting for a year and a half like everyone else, dude. <laughs> Maybe soon here, you know. <laughs> I don't have any SNDL. I don't know, man. SNDL. I don't like to talk about it. SNDL's full is just way too damn big for me to see that thing. Like, shit's crazy. But I just obviously see the manipulation and the short and all that stuff continuously happening with that, too. So, who knows? BBBY? <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I said, I don't, want, I don't like to talk about anything other than GME or, or AMC. Because in the end of the day, I'm about this movement. I'm about change. And I see change going through those two stocks more than anything else. But, I mean, obviously, like I said, I make other plays. I I just don't like to share them. That's what I make fun of the other YouTubers about. It's like, dude, if you're in the, if you're in this for the movement, this, this is the way I look at it. If you're in this for the movement, if you're in this for the apes, 
you know what the hell we stand for. We stand for change. We stand for all this corruption to, to go away. So what the hell is... I, I know they're going to be like, well, I'm trying to show these guys how to get money. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Coors, you, you were preaching Prague at 450 and, and and it's down to like a buck ninety nine. You have nine charts up and all of them are down. And people are showing, you don't even have AMC up anymore. Like I said, it's like... <sighs> it's just crazy. I don't want to get into that stuff, but like, it's crazy, man. <laughs> people got to... Got to shift their priorities to to better things, man. <laughs> Can't watch a line all day. And they, and, and especially the thing is, is they're watching these like one minute candles. And like I said, you you can't sit there and 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 cover all these other things when you know AMC and GameStop are the stocks that are are for the movement and what the movement are standing and what they're about, dude. That's why it's like every video I ever make or any time I go live. I'm, I'll only talk about those two stocks. I don't want to talk about anything else in any of my other plays because my other plays aren't relevant to this movement. They're relevant to myself. So that's the way I look at it. Like I said, I don't like to make decisions for other people or stretch the movement thin in ways to where now people are stuck in Prague. Now they're stuck in all these other stocks where they have no choice but to hold on now and then they go well no i'm long on it well yeah but you got in on it because let's be real you're watching a youtuber the youtuber said look at this the stocks information look at the short interest and all this stuff and it looks like it's ready for a squeeze play and then but then they'll go oh, i like i like the company too and then the next thing you notice it goes down and you're stuck in the play <laughs> so it's like like i said man i only talk about amc or or people Yeah, yeah, that Ryan Cohen tweet was something else, dude. I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> Seemed way too far in. Holy crap. <laughs> Please explain this if anyone knows about the Cohen tweet, dude. It just cracks me up. I'm pretty sure it affects all of them. I'm not sure. The other thing, too, that a lot of people don't know or realize about, too. So, at the end of this year, I know everyone's going to be like, well, it's September. That sucks. But it's still sweet. Phase 6 happens this year in September. And it's basically with these ISDA contracts and everything I've been talking to you guys about right now. So, basically, anybody... So, Phase 5 is kind of like a test phase. So, it's only following these people who are writing ISDA contracts and it's only following their deposits if they have over $50 billion in, in assets. So basically, they're only tracking the biggest hedge funds right now, like the top top 10%. Well, phase six, it goes all the way down to 10, bil uh, 10 billion, which it goes from you know 15% all the way up to 67, which by the point, by the time it goes, you know, into effect, I would say more to go about 75%. So 75% of all derivatives that are being written will now, by September, be, uh, be monitored, which is huge. Okay, Ryan. I mean, he is right, though. Wikipedia's got quite a bit of stuff. I don't know about Melvin, man. I haven't read anything, honestly, about Melvin. I've been doing too much stuff about looking at these this corruption and, and the fun stuff in the SEC. Of course I'll buy more, man. Especially when I get my tax return. If this shit's at like 13, 14, 12 bucks, dude, I'll be jacked.
69 days for their NFT release. That's probably it. <laughs> That'd be funny. Alrighty, friend. Unless anyone has any more questions. Sorry, almost one o'clock. I'm sure taxes will be delayed, honestly. Okay. I know he said Citadel moved their positions or, or offloaded stuff, but his source was a friend heard some rich people over talking at lunch, you guys. <laughs> Let's, like, that's what we're talking about right now. He said my friend heard some rich people talking at lunch, and they said that Citadel moved their position. Sorry, but <laughs> according to Bloomberg, that's not true. So I believe Bloomberg data over somebody at lunch tables. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Lou would ever want to interview with me, my friend. I don't honestly know too many people that want to do an interview with me anymore, to be honest with you. I would love to do interviews with some people. The one person I want to do is that Patrick dude from Overstock that Al interviewed, but I feel like Al asked him such stupid questions. I could ask him such better questions about what's going on. Like, one of the questions I wanted to know, because I don't know if you guys saw the interview with him a long time ago, but he said that somebody who was involved in short selling came up and told him what to look for. And one of the things that he said to look for was you're going to start showing up in foreign markets. And obviously AMC was getting smashed and smashed. And out of nowhere, the BDRs came into play. So I was real curious to be like, hey, you know, why did that guy say that we would come up in fo you would come up in foreign markets? What was the implication of that? Because, I mean, we all looked into the BDRs and things of that nature, but I still don't truly fully understand what, you know, what they would have been able to do with those. But obviously, he said it was going to happen for a reason, so. But there's a lot of questions, like, I would ask him about his, uh, all sorts of things. Like I said, there's a lot of things that Al didn't ask him, and I wish I knew how he got a hold of him. That would have been sick. No, I have no news on Al. Going bosses YouTube. Like, is he on YouTube right now? It doesn't even look like he's on. He's not on right now, my friend. I try, man. Most people, like I said, they just want to watch the Hopium videos. They don't. They don't want to see the DD. I gotta start streaming the line, I guess. <laughs> I just don't want to be a line streamer, man.
All right, my friends. It's been a long night. Thank you all for stopping by. Maybe I'll, I'll probably stream a little bit tomorrow. Or may, and then I'm going to make my own video actually on the Hester Pierce because a lot of people probably missed a whole bunch of it. So uh, I should have my Gary Gensler video up tomorrow as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a good night.